Давайте найдите, где вы. Ilmeisesti tämmöinen, jos mä pidän tässä vaan vähän alempana huulia, niin tämä ihan kantaa tuonne hyvin. Ja siellä näkyy peukku. Ilmeisesti menee etään myös. Joo. Selvä. Tai se on vielä tulossa takaisin. Tota. Mä annan kohta varmaan merkin sitten, niin tota, sit voi avata, avata tota, hanat. You're just waiting one person to enter. Start. On Kroni valmiina, Bruno valmiina. Joo. Okay. Uh, welcome to the VES seminar 2023. All of you who are present here in the lighting studio of the Theatre Academy of the Uni Arts Helsinki, and you who are uh, watching the stream uh, online. My name is uh, Tomi Humalisto and I'm the professor in lighting design. Um, with me are some dear colleagues who will moderate discussions during this afternoon. And in order of appearance, <laughs> we have uh, Lisa Ikonen, the professor in design for the performing arts. And then we have uh, Raisa Kilpelainen, the lecturer in performance design here. 
and we have Thomas Franti, the professor in sound design. Um, and then, uh, additionally, uh, we have uh, Ronnie Rautavuori and Bruno Hiltunen, who will take care of the streaming today. And we have Benla Heikkila, who has made the remarkable producing work for this day. Um, first, uh, some words about the context of this seminar. Um, this best seminar has been a forum for sharing the themes, ideas and contents we recognize in our teaching practice and learning environments. Uh, this forum can be considered as a bridge between performance design, education and professional field. Uh, a place to meet and discuss. First, this seminar was organized in 2017 by lighting and sound design programs. And later, scenographers joined us two years ago uh, when the program of design for the performing arts was transferred from Alta University to UniArts. Uh, this comes uh, from the Finnish words, Vuorovaikutteisuus estysuunnittelussa, which we have translated in English as interactivity in performance design. Uh, the name of interactivity tries to reach one mutual factor in our field of making performances an interaction between different elements, people, materials, technologies, practices, passions and inspirations. I could add to that word um, uh, cultures and languages. Then we arrive to the general themes of this best seminar. Internationality. What do we think about it now? We have just briefly uh, returned back to live encounters after COVID-19. It is not long ago we tried to recognize each other's behind the surgical masks. Not long ago we couldn't make or enjoy live performances. It feels like a distant bad dream, but it wasn't long ago actually. Something changed. However, uh, do we like it or not? We learned to use Zoom or Teams and mode of distant working has been part of uh, our working life. And it is not all bad, it, uh, as it gives some new possibilities for time control and sustainability, for example, by reducing traveling. Uh, what remains is the question of the value of the human encounter. We did not want to stay in distant mode endlessly and cooperation has some limits without actual presence. The post-COVID world there has been a new boom of international activities, performances are touring again, uh, students and professionals are thinking again about working or studying abroad. And internationality is actually one of the strategic aims of the UniArts itself. Um, and then um, we have already experienced some like a practical um, um, experience, like to mention last semester our programs participated in uh, Prague, Prague Quaternal, in, uh, which is international world exhibition of scenography. And I can't help of mentioning that students won award most imaginative and inventive design in the student exhibition. The, the name of the, of the piece was Suo Silent Disco. Um, winning is always nice, um, but there is another kind of a gain too. Watching students and professionals during the exhibition, I felt there was a very tangible joy for meeting new people, meeting old friends, encountering new ideas, but still finding mutual shared things, uh, things between different people. Uh, thinking about the nature of the work of a performance designer, scenographer, lighting or sound designer, I would say costume designer as well, because the costume designers were also part of the, um, uh, this um, winning award from the Aalto University. Um, uh, it is basically... Um, something you can do in different places, this work, and different contexts. We have always 
uh, in our origin and background, our own locality, but there, uh, that doesn't prevent us to operate elsewhere. So, once again, what is this inter being in between in the world uh, and in the world internationality? About this we intend to discuss here today. Before entering into presentations and discussions, uh, I briefly go through the program. Um, we have basically uh, like three one-hour slots and pauses in betweens. And, and then in the end we have a time for mutual uh, summary discussion. So if you have then possi you have then possibility to return to your notions about pre previous presentations and discussions. And, and just to briefly mention, uh, we have a keynote speaker here, Ksenia Peretruhina, uh, who will start our uh, uh, seminar. And then uh, we have a uh, scenographer Oscar Dempsey, lighting designer Pietu Pietiainen, and sound designer Tuomas Norvio here. As well, when we go forward, we have still um, this kind of student and recently graduated panel discussion where we have uh, like sound technicians Bailey Polkinghorn, uh, we have uh, Vili Pack, MA student in sound design, and scenographer Mikko Salminen, and Oti Vedenpää who is an MA student in lighting designer. Okay, and um, then I, I think I just uh, wish you an interesting afternoon with the best today, and uh, I pass the lead now to Professor Lisa Ikonen. Ah, correct, you already have the mic. since 2000 and as a scenographer in drama theatre and in the opera since 2005. From March uh, 22 she has lived and worked in Finland and she has fought, forced to leave Russia because of her strong statements against the war of, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, Ksenia Peretruhkina has had several solo exhibitions and extensive experience in group projects in Russia, Europe and United States and have designed more than 30 uh, productions in drama and opera, both small and big stages. She is also a practi practitioner and theorist of contemporary theatre and ex experimental the theatre and is consistent engaged in the development of theatre language. Xenia is the author of a course of lectures and workshops on social theatre as a tool for building social trust and comforting society, horizontal processes in theatre, ecological thinking in theatre, and theatre as a laboratory for freedom and democracy. She has received several awards for contemporary art and theatre, for example, um, Innovation Contemporary Art Prize 2020 and the Golden Mask National Theatre Prize three times 2013, 18 and 19. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, good morning or good, uh, good day. It's very good. Thank you uh, for coming. Я не знала, что меня будут представлять. Это такой немножко некролог по моему 
I didn't know uh, that uh, I would be introduced here. It's some kind of uh, in post memoriam uh, according to uh, my works. И, ну, наверное, это очень корректно, потому что э, последние годы в России, как опытный и очень известный художник, я, э, это очень важно, это отражается на работе, потому что все люди уже знают, что ты делаешь, и когда зовут тебя, они понимают, с кем имеют дело. А в Финляндии я начинаю практически с нуля. But I think that uh, it was very correct because uh, in Russia, for example, uh, during uh, past ye uh, last years, uh, so I uh, did my work and uh, uh, people knew me, people uh, knew what uh, I was doing and so on and so forth. But here in Finland, so uh, I'm not uh, known and that is why it's very important uh, to introduce myself or uh, to tell the audience about my work. На основании чего я, ну, собственно, что является поводом того, что я могу сравнивать свой российский, я могу имею возможность сравнить свой российский опыт со своим финским опытом, но это очень, конечно, субъективное сравнение. Я не самый типичный художник для России, и в этом смысле я не знаю, насколько это сравнение вообще, ну, насколько это может быть опыт любого иностранца. So uh, I can speak about um, both Russian experience and uh, local experience here, uh, but uh, I should emphasize that uh, it's uh, my personal subjective opinion, uh, but whether it's uh, correct or not, I, I don't know, because, uh, for example, according to Russian scale, I'm not a typical artist. Um, какой опыт у меня уже был в Финляндии? Из довоенного опыта был выпуск uh, спектакля «Смерть на работе» uh, на фестивале «Балтийский цикл». Uh, so, some words about my pre-war experience. Uh, so, uh, the first one is uh, death at work. Uh, and uh, so it was uh, on the, the program of the Baltic Circle Festival. Uh, с... Мы попали с мужем в Финляндию, он был драматургом, и я художником, чтобы выпустить спектакль, короткий эпизод всеобщей истории грибной цивилизации, Эспа Сити Театр, в январе 2023 года. Я художник. Is a stage designer in the production called "A Short Episode in the Universal History of the Mushroom Civilization," and uh, so uh, uh, the first night of the play uh, is uh, or was uh, this year in January. Крошечный uh, иммерсивный спектакль Далин в шведскоязычном театре Клок реки одновременно перформанс концерты ужин. So uh, and uh, speaking about my work in Finland also it was a rather uh, small a small production named Dalen. Uh, it was a performance, a concert and a dinner. It's so called immersive uh, form uh, in uh, that Clock uh, Rike. Uh, Swedish uh, theater, Swedish speaking theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, now uh, so uh, speaking about my current work, uh, I'm uh, working on the uh, production of uh, a, a play named Mary Monster It, uh, so a Sea Monsters. Uh, it is uh, uh, a, uh, a play, a musical play for children. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it is uh, uh, for TT Theater. Ну и параллельно за эти полтора года я выпустила один спектакль в Берлине и один в Болгарии. 
And uh, so, uh, at the same time, uh, during past uh, year and a half, I also produced or um, uh, took part in the production of uh, uh, production, sorry, uh, one in uh, B- Bulgaria and one in Berlin. Это тот опыт, который я могу анализировать, и, пожалуйста, он не претендует на объективность, это чисто субъективный мой опыт. So, uh, this is the experience uh, I can analyze, and I would like to say once more that it is not uh, an so-called um, objective or true experience from all points of view. It is mine, my own and uh, my opinion. Uh, ну вот тема нашего uh, сегодняшнего разговора была о том, какие проблемы стоят перед uh, иностранным художником в uh, Финляндии. И первый сложный вопрос – это зритель. Uh, and a uh, foreign uh, foreign artist in Finland and so uh, if we analyze them the first one is the audience потому uh, что быть хорошим художником в России мне давала возможность тончайшее глубинное знание что собой представляет зритель чего он ждет какое у него базисное ожидание. И исходя из этого, я знала, как его удивить. So, uh, because uh, I was a good artist uh, in Russia, and uh, that's, uh, uh, that is why I uh, know the Russian audience, I know the expectations of the Russian audience, and so uh, uh, it is on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, I knew how to surprise uh, the audience. И изучение аудитории, конечно, требует времени разных типов аудиторий, и я сейчас нахожусь в процессе. And so, speaking about getting acquainted to the audience, so it, so we need time for it, and now I'm in the process of studying and of understanding the audience from different aspects. Ну вот, например, у меня такое наблюдение, что российский зритель больше всего любит первые ряды и всегда стремится сесть на них, а финский зритель, в, если не полный заполненный зал, то он садится такой стайкой посередине зала и никогда не садится на первые ряды. So, uh, the first of my observations is the following. Uh, for example, uh, Russian audience, uh, speaking about the theater, I think, uh, prefers the front, uh, the front uh, of the auditorium, uh, but uh, Finnish audience uh, prefer to be somewhere in the middle and also in the rear. Ну, это просто it's a funny moment. Вот в маленьком иммерсивном спектакле Далин, который представлял собой зрительный зал, поскольку это был ужин, это было девять разного размера столов, расставленных в пространстве. Uh, so, speaking about uh, that uh, a small immersive play uh, named D- Dalen, uh, so uh, we spoke about uh, the auditorium, and uh, so if it was at the same time also dinner, and there were uh, nine different tables uh, which were uh, located or situated in the space. И э, я волновалась, что обычно ну, в России зрители очень переживают, что им не достанутся лучшие места, что если они будут сидеть где-нибудь далеко, то они что-то не увидят и что-то там им не достанется. So, and the, uh, so I was concerned. Uh, why? Because, for example, uh, the audience in Russia is very keen to get uh, the best uh, the best places for them uh, and uh, to uh, just to to have it um и ко мне подошёл актёр нашего спектакля и сказал, что он переживает за прямо противоположное, что финские зрители не будут садиться на центральные столы, что они будут стараться сидеть где-нибудь там подальше, чтобы их не трогали и не дай бог не попасть в центр внимания. So, uh, but uh, speaking uh, about that play here, uh, uh, our our actor uh, 
came, came to me and uh, so uh, his uh, concern was uh, uh, the opposite. Uh, so uh, he was afraid that uh, Finnish audience uh, would try to avoid uh, uh, the places, uh, the tables in the center and uh, to avoid uh, any interaction with the play. Но, к моей огромной радости, все оказалось совершенно не так. Зрители и шведские, и финские, и всякие э, старались занять центральные столы, то есть они действовали так, как я, я предполагала. But uh, so uh, I was very uh, excited and it was a joy that uh, so things didn't happen that way uh, because uh, Finnish audience, uh, Swedish audience, uh, uh, on the contrary, uh, tried uh, to take uh, the central places so uh, the way also uh, the Russian audience behaves. И в этом смысле с одной стороны, я хочу изучить то, как устроен зритель, чего он ждет, как он любит. А с другой стороны, я поняла, что я предложила систему, в которой, очевидно, лучше сидеть поближе. И зритель ее считал и согласился на новый опыт. And so, what, uh, what I want to do. Uh, on the uh, one hand, uh, I want to... Mm, uh, to uh, learn uh, and to know uh, the audience here, uh, what, uh, uh, are, uh, what the expe expectations of the audience and uh, what uh, uh, the uh, preference of the audience are. But on the other hand, I also I have created here this system uh, within the framework of, of which uh, the audience uh, tries uh, to uh, take uh, that places in the middle. Понятно ли, что я предлагаю новую систему, зритель научится новому So it means that uh, when I have that, uh, when I offer a, a new system, uh, it means that the audience will get a new experience, will learn new experience. Для меня это, it's very big news for me. Uh, Сейчас я хочу поговорить о производстве, о процессе производства и о результате. Now I would like uh, to speak about uh, the production, the production process and about the results. Um, разницу между Россией и Финляндией я в, в отношении производства я бы описала так. So the difference between Russia and Finland uh, in the production terms I would like uh, to describe the following. В России почти ничего нельзя, почти всё нельзя. In Russia almost everything is uh, forbidden. В Финляндии можно всё, кроме того, что нельзя. In Finland uh, so everything is possible except uh, the things which are forbidden. Казалось бы, это очень хорошо. So it may, it may look like that it's very good. Но, uh, от, ну, нет, да, это хорошо. Yes, it, it's good. Отсутствие давления, коррупции, воровства, лени, всего, с чем ты сталкиваешься в российской системе, это хорошо. So, uh, the things as uh, the absence of pressure, corruption, uh, robbery or thievery and uh, laziness, uh, so it is very, very good. Но в России эта система давления порождает систему сопротивления. But in Russia that a system of pressure uh, so gives birth uh, to uh, the system of resistance. И энергия преодоления вот этих запретов всего, что нельзя. And so the energy of overcoming uh, those all forbidden things Это та же энергия, которая заставляет нас заглянуть за горизонт, сделать невозможное, выйти за рамки, нарушить границы, пойти в неизведанное. So it is the same kind of energy which makes us uh, uh, look upon behind the horizon, uh, do uh, impossible things, uh, not, not stay uh, within the framework, uh, also to break borders and uh, to go to the unknown. И, uh, 
Это ведь и есть формула искусства – создать закон, а потом нарушить закон. И в момент нарушения закона и создается искусство. At first uh, to create law, then to break it, and uh, at the moment of breaking it, we can uh, say that uh, art uh, is uh, being born. И вот это то, что меня очень удивило в Финляндии. Никто не старается выпрыгнуть из штанов, никто не старается выйти за границы рамок. And so uh, the thing which surprised me a lot uh, in, uh, fin in the Finnish theater. Nobody tries to escape uh, his or her trousers. It mean, uh, 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 doesn't try to uh, go uh, uh, between uh, the uh, known borders, uh, to go somewhere to unknown. Мы как будто бы все просто работаем. So it looks like that everybody uh, simply uh, does uh, the work. Я работаю художником, режиссер работает режиссером, а зритель работает зрителем. So it means that, for example, I work as an artist, uh, uh, the director works as a director, and the audience works as audience. И вот здесь огромная разница с российским театром. And here we see uh, a large difference uh, compared uh, to the Russian theatre. В России Спектакль – это старт. В Финляндии спектакль – это финиш. So in Russia, uh, the play, the performance is the beginning. And uh, in Finland, uh, it is finish, the end. Um, вот как это, как это ощущается в России? Um, каждый маленький театр, который делает свой маленький спектакль, надеется, все участники процесса надеются, что это будет чудо, это будет выдающийся спектакль, он будет жить 20 лет, он объездит весь мир, мы все прославимся и войдем в историю. So what do I mean? Uh, for example, in Russia, uh, every uh, small theater uh, which produces even a small play, uh, a performance, so uh, the theater and uh, uh, its uh, artists, its actors hope that uh, at the end uh, they uh, will have a miracle, an outstanding performance, that this uh, play and performance uh, will uh, will uh, exist, uh, for example, during uh, 20 upcoming years, and that all the, the whole world will see it, and uh, the theater will be famous and uh, will uh, leave its uh, name in the history. И зритель тоже. Он ждет от театра чуда, он ждет от театра лекарства, он ждет от театра смысла жизни. And uh, so also uh, the, uh, the attitude of the audience. Uh, the audience uh, waits uh, some miracle from the theater, some assistance, uh, some remedy, and uh, also uh, the, uh, uh, that um, sense of life. Um. И, ну, мне кажется, что это хорошая черта русского театра. And I think that uh, it's, uh, it's a good, a good uh, thing in the Russian theater. Театр Финляндии не занимает никакой исключительной позиции. Можно пойти поужинать, можно пойти в театр. И мне кажется, что вот исключительная позиция искусства – это ценность. So, uh, uh, in my mind, uh, the uh, Finnish theatre so doesn't have any outstanding position, what I mean. I, th I say that, for example, one can go to uh, have a supper or uh, he, ca he can go uh, to the theatre. But I think that uh, this so-called outstanding position of art is very valuable. E я много думала об этом, и вот я рассказывала вам специально так долго пример с зрителями и столами в спектакле «Далин», где оказалось, что предлагая новую систему, зритель приобрел новый опыт. So, and uh, I was thinking a lot about uh, this thing, and uh, so... Uh, I told you also a lot about uh, that Dalen uh, production, uh, about the audience, the location of the audience, about tables, uh, because uh, what do I mean? I mean that uh, 
so when I offer a new system, then also the audience will get some uh, new approach. И, возможно, и здесь нужно также на это смотреть. Не в смысле, что финский театр такой-то и больше никакой. Он может быть разным. И как художник с каким-то другим опытом, я могу предложить этот опыт. И, возможно, он просто расширит опыт финского театра. And perhaps uh, this approach can be also used in the Finnish theatre. Uh, so uh, theatre can be different. Uh, so uh, one uh, should not uh, state that it's only the way it is and it will stay that. I can uh, offer a new experience and so also the whole experience of the theatre can be broadened. И сейчас для меня это главный художественный интерес в работе в финском театре, как зажечь эту яркую звезду не от давления, а от ситуации свободы. And uh, so, uh, uh, this is the thing now, uh, which, uh, which uh, I'm trying to do. Uh, I would like to know how I could um, put on that uh, bright a uh, star of the theater where uh, that experience uh, is not uh, uh, based uh, on pressure but uh, is based on freedom. Следующий пункт, который я хотела бы поговорить, это диалог с театром. So the uh, как с театром как с организацией, в которой я прихожу. Uh, the next thing uh, I would like to discuss is uh, the dialogue with uh, the theater. The theater here, I mean an organization in which uh, uh, I work. Всегда, когда я начинаю как художник работать над спектаклем, я пытаюсь выяснить у театра, а чего театр хочет, чего он ждет. Вот что это как бы что хотят как хочется изменить мир этим спектаклем so uh, every time uh, i start uh, to work uh, uh, within uh, the within a new production i uh, i always uh, ask the theater uh, what uh, it expects uh, from me, what uh, it wants. Uh, so how uh, can we uh, change uh, this world, the world? И в этом смысле ситуация в Финляндии не очень отличается от ситуации с Россией. And here in this aspect, the situation in Finland doesn't differ much from the Russian situation. Я пытаюсь вовлечь всех участников театра в художественный процесс. Всех-всех. И э, как бы верхушку театра, директоров, продюсеров и работников, разных рядовых работников театра, чтобы все имели какой-то смысл и были втянуты в этот процесс тем или иным образом. So, uh, I try to involve all, uh, all the people in the theater in the process. I mean, when I see all, I mean directors, producers, other personnel, so, uh, so that uh, they should be involved uh, in, uh, this, uh, in this performance and in this work. На мой взгляд, это очень важно, потому что театр — это айсберг, у которого есть видимая часть, где находятся актеры и творческие группы, и еще огромная невидимая часть, где находятся все, и очень важно, чтобы они тоже были творческими работниками. So, uh, it is very important, because I can compare Mm, uh, the production in the theater uh, to an iceberg. Uh, I mean uh, that uh, visible part of the iceberg uh, is uh, for uh, actors and uh, those uh, who... And directors. And directors. Uh, but uh, I would like to involve uh, everybody in the theater uh, in order to do uh, the process uh, uh, creative. Зачем я задаю вопрос театру, что он хочет от спектакля? Например, по причине экологии. Я хочу... Да. So, uh, why do I ask uh, the theater uh, about its expectations uh, from uh, the production? For example, ecology. Um, в, ну, это был очень важный для меня интересный вопрос, потому что Россия, конечно же, не страна экологии глобально, хотя продвинутые художники стараются с этим работать. 
So uh, it was very important, interesting for me and important because uh, when uh, we speak about ecology, uh, so uh, let's say that Russia is not uh, so active in this field, but of course the most advanced uh, artists all work uh, with this subject. Но я в Финляндии в театре не увидела такого глобального экологического мышления, включающего весь театр как механизм в этот процесс понимания, что сам театр, его пространство, его бывшие спектакли, все это является ресурсом, который мы должны учитывать при работе. Мы начинаем с нуля, так же как в России. So, uh, but in Finland uh, I also uh, didn't see that uh, that uh, the theater is uh, like uh, the whole ecological uh, approach uh, because uh, we speak about space in the theater, its uh, former productions that uh, they should uh, use the, as uh, resources and also uh, because of, of this, of the mentioned above, uh, we have to work uh, starting from zero. А вот это все знание – это огромный ресурс – вовлечь зрителя как активного участника процесса, вовлечь всех участников театра, то есть э, видеть театр за рамками одного спектакля, который мы сейчас делаем, видеть театр как глобальный процесс, в который мы вовлечены. And, uh, so, um, I, I said, I also could say that... Uh, 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 the audience is also uh, a resource and uh, uh, we should uh, involve uh, the audience uh, and uh, the participants uh, of the performance in this uh, global uh, approach and um, in the global process. Um. Все это я рассказала, чтобы вы поняли, с каким огромным уважением, интересом и попыткой сделать что-то важное, как я отношусь к финскому театру. So, uh, I have uh, told you uh, all about it because um, I want you to understand that uh, uh, I, uh, so my, my attitude to the Finnish uh, theater is full of respect and interest and uh, I would like to work uh, in this sphere. А теперь шок контент о моей работе в настоящей работе в TTT в Тампере. And so now uh, some shock content about my current work um, in the uh, TTT uh, theater uh, in Tampere. Um, <laughs> Я пришла в театр и рассматривала сцену. Это сцена Эйна Самолайнин, прекрасная историческая сцена. Uh, when I came uh, to the theater, uh, so uh, I looked at the stage of как Инесса. Эйна Самолайнин. Эйна Самолайнин, or something like that. It is a historical stage. It has some history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 14 штанкет и 3 лебед. И, и 3 линии с 6 возможностями для лебедок. Uh, so, uh, there were uh, 14 pipes and uh, three lines with uh, the uh, opportunity to have uh, six hoists. Я сказала, отличные возможности, на что мне ответили, отличные, но они не все ваши. So, and uh, so how I reacted, I said that uh, the uh, opportunities were excellent. And uh, what answer did I uh, get? So, uh, yes, uh, they are marvelous, but not of them are yours. Я сначала не поняла, но что же я унесу домой штанкеты, в смысле, что имеется в виду? Uh, at first I didn't understand uh, the meaning of the, of the uh, sentence, of the message, uh, because uh, I thought it was impossible uh, to get some pipes uh, from the theater to home. So what did they mean by that? Но они имели в виду, что они хранят на штанкетах спектакли, и мне дадут использовать четыре штанкета. So, uh, they meant uh, that um, they have... Uh, um, those pipes as a storage uh, for, uh, for productions, and I'll have only four of pipes uh, for, uh, for use. Um, 
То же самое свет практически не перевешивается, чтобы не тратить время. So uh, I can say that the same situation uh, also uh, is with lighting. Uh, it doesn't uh, have any locations, is not moved uh, in order not to spend, uh, to waste uh, any time. Uh, следующий пункт, в другую сторону меня поразивший. У, у нас в этом спектакле 80 репетиционных точек на сцене. So, uh, another aspect uh, which surprised me. Uh, in this uh, production we have 80 um, uh, places of uh, rehearsal places, points uh, uh, on the stage. Это невозможно себе представить. В России, если есть... На выпуск дается неделя или две. Сцена очень дорого стоит, это драгоценности. Ее дают на маленькое время. Uh, so it's impossible uh, to, uh, to have this situation in Russia. Why? Uh, because uh, for this production on the stage and rehearsals uh, have only, we have only one or two weeks uh, because uh, this stage is very... Uh, very Казалось бы, хорошо, да, для меня, но ничего особенного я не увидела. Я не увидела, что это какое-то эффективное использование этой сцены. So one can, uh, can think that it was good for me, but I didn't see any pluses. I didn't see the efficient use, use of the stage. Из этих 80 точек, это, это детский зрелищный спектакль с большими ростовыми куклами, с множеством спецэффектов, и из 80 дней три дня технические. So, uh, speaking about that point, uh, I think uh, uh, we meant uh, 80, 80 days of rehearsals. So, uh, speaking about the production, it's... Uh, Uh, production for children uh, with um, uh, also with the, um, such uh, dolls which are very very large and tall and but uh, uh, from 80 days of rehearsals we have only three for technical things it's impossible я просила еще ну, для того, чтобы что-то сделать, какие-то технические вещи, собственно, чтобы сделать свою интересную работу, мне нужно ее когда-то делать. So I tried to, uh, to have uh, some more time uh, for uh, some uh, technical things for me, uh, because if I want to have interesting work, if I want uh, to succeed in it, so I have... Uh, I have, uh, I need more time. Но мне говорили, что я могу приходить на полчаса раньше, и, соответственно, технические работники, потому что я не одна могу это все делать. Uh, или потом мне добавили несколько дней, но технические работники, поскольку режиссер не приходил на эти дни, то никто особенно не работал. Все были раздражены тем, что мы могли бы отдыхать, а мы работаем. So, and, uh, mm. Uh, I was given an opportunity uh, to uh, be in the theater, for example, uh, half an hour earlier. And uh, also technical personnel uh, was also then present. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, then afterwards I also had some additional days, but uh, when the director is not present, uh, the technical personnel was also not, not very uh, glad that uh, they have to work extra. Еще мое удивительное наблюдение, что вот есть святое время, это ланч. И мне кажется, что вся Финляндия одновременно ходит на ланч и одновременно возвращается с ланча. А это могло быть техническое время на сцене в России. Так расписано время, что когда одни едят, другие работают на сцене. So another, um, another surprising thing, uh, so uh, it is lunch. Uh, I have um, um, that uh, picture uh, that uh, all Finland uh, goes to lunch and returns to lunch at the same time. So, uh, but, uh, but I think that uh, it is not a uh, very, uh, very good option because uh, the stage time is very expensive. So when some people have lunch, so uh, another, another group can work on the stage because it's very, very expensive that time.
No, maybe in Finland not very expensive. It's Russia very expensive, and uh, we share the uh, time uh, with nights uh, on uh, um, the uh, 24 uh, hours because it's very expensive time. But Finland not. Um, но э, у меня вообще ощущение, что вот с этим спектаклем мы как будто изобретаем театр заново. So I have uh, some, uh, I think that I have some vision, uh, or it feels like that with this production we are inventing. Uh, it doesn't work. Invention. Yes, we are inventing uh, uh, the from the very beginning. Um, ну вот. Uh, очень странно, что, ну, мне кажется, что мы не репетируем спектакль как структуру, чтобы сделать отдельные моменты, потом начать работать над соединением. Мы каждый раз идем от начала до конца. So we don't have uh, the rehearsals the same, the following way. So we not uh, have rehearsals with uh, structures, with uh, different points in order to have uh, the whole Uh, the whole thing uh, then. So we have rehearsals every time uh, from the very beginning to the very end. Очень работа с предметом находится на очень зачаточном таком начальном уровне. С предметом имеется в виду что? Тема? Предмет нет, на сцене yeah, предмет. предмет. So and, uh, and work with objects on the stage is uh, in the uh, very, very beginning is, is so, at the, at the beginning point. Uh, например, есть понимание, что предмет появляется, но нет понимания, что, он ищ... что исчезновение предмета со сцены – это тоже возможность какого-то художественного решения. Просто технически все все время убирают. Uh, uh, because, for example, of course, uh, so uh, we know that uh, an object appears on the stage, okay? But so there is no way of uh, getting it from the stage uh, in an uh, artist way because it is also the thing of uh, of art on the stage how it disappears this object то же самое понятие о монтаже такое очень примитивное как в начале изобретения кинематографа монтаж имеется в виду что когда сложение частей and uh, also when uh, we are getting parts together so also the approach is rather primitive as uh, at the beginning of uh, cinema era Uh, то есть есть понятие о прямом монтаже и нет понятия о том, что он может происходить с наложениями, что звук может опережать или отставать. То есть вот, uh, может быть, Россия страна Эйзенштейна с его сложнейшими монтажными конструкциями, uh, а это, может быть, просто мне достался такой пример, но я вижу это как закон. Uh, for example, so uh, th uh, there's an um, uh, understanding that um, those uh, parts taken uh, together can be uh, on the hor uh, horizontal rev level, but not, for example, above uh, and uh, uh, so uh, on the top. And uh, uh, also, there is, no, uh, there is not understanding that, for example, uh, sound can be uh, whether uh, earlier or later. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, when, uh, we, when we speak about Russia, it is uh, the homeland of uh, uh, director Eisenstein. 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 Uh, perhaps uh, that's uh, the thing where we have those uh, complicated, very good things uh, in this sphere also. Um. Ну, в общем, доброжелательно и не изобретательно. Let us say it is uh, kind, but not inventive. Uh, это как бы общее ощущение. Это очень сложный для меня продакшн, о котором я рассказывал, но мне не хотелось бы только сложности uh, рассказывать. Вот хочу рассказать хорошее. So, uh, this production uh, is uh, very, very complicated for me, but I don't uh, want to speak about difficulties only. I would like to tell you about uh, another production. Not enough, просто хорошее хочу. Uh, oh, so not production, sorry, about uh, positive things. Um, я надеюсь, что мне удастся там сделать, ну, по крайней мере, он уже отрепетирован, и я надеюсь, что будет очень сложный аттракцион. So I hope that I will manage uh, to, um, uh, to uh, make the a rather complicated uh, uh, detail, some, some, some scene. Uh, это персонаж «Большая волна». 
So uh, we're speaking about uh, uh, the act named, uh, or this thing named... Uh, Not uh, act, uh, act uh, is a good thing, thing, is thing. actor. <laughs> My good, actors is good. Uh, uh, big wave, big wave. Big wave, yeah, alta. Mm -hmm. uh, огромный занавес медленно спускается. So uh, a very, very big curtain is uh, going slow, slowly down. Три вентилятора в разное время начинают, начинают его раздувать. Uh, three ventilators um, at different time uh, begin uh, to blow on it. Он поднимается на аудиторию вот на расстоянии вашего последнего ряда. So it goes uh, to the audience and uh, so it is uh, also even uh, under oh. Он, он над последним рядом или просто поднимается? Просто поднимается. So it goes even uh, to the rear, to the rear rows. Второй объект выглядящий также невидимо появляется с пола и за считанные секунды проносят, пробегают uh, актеры над зрительным залом uh, огромное полотнище возвращают обратно. The second object uh, also uh, so ri um, rises from the floor and uh, in some seconds actors go into the uh, audience or to that uh, auditorium and they have uh, that canvas uh, in, their, in their hands. Very big object, 15 meters. Uh, and in that time the... <laughs> и занавес падает на них, актеры падают под занавесом и они растворяются в как бы ложатся на пол, то есть... The curtain goes down and the actors are under the, uh, the curtain and so they're just uh, on the floor as if uh, they're just uh, the, the same with that canvas or curtain. И невидимо uh, технические работники утягивают две эти половинки и все это время актеры поют. And uh, also technical personnel uh, so uh, uh, replaces uh, those uh, two parts uh, of, uh, the, of the curtain and of the canvas and all the time, all the time act actors sing. Чтобы сделать свет к этой истории, финский художник по свету остался на ночь и сделал огромную световую композицию, и для меня это было как победа и надежда. So, in order to have the appropriate uh, lighting uh, for the production, uh, that uh, light designer, uh, Finnish designer, uh, stayed overnight in the theater in order to have it very well done, and so uh, for me it was. Uh, Uh, a, a very uh, good approach and it was uh, some kind of victory. Okay. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Um, no, no. Yeah, uh, I, I think time is running and, and we have this uh, pro program. Uh, so it's time to thank you, Xenia. It was really valuable to hear about your experiences when you compare uh, what it means for foreign uh, artists to Uh, work here or in our uh, own country. And now uh, um, we would have um, a minute for one very uh, small question from the audience or comment. <laughs> If you don't, do you? Just, just to, uh, I was thinking about the You mentioned uh, this, this kind of the practices in Russia and, and Finland, like you, how to use the stage time. So is it a pra common practice in, in Russia that uh, even though the, it's, it's very precious and, and extensive, so, so the production time is given to the one production at time, so there is not so much this kind of repertoire uh, set up like there was in Tampere, that, that, uh, that there is, is everything taken down? Uh, for the one production that there is space and, and time for these two weeks only for one production. Is this common or is it? Uh, Или в Либерта есть проект? Вы 
uh, have a big rehearsal period in the rehearsal room and uh, before premiere we uh, and sometimes we have one or two days on the stage during the big one without set and we have uh, the special period before premiere on the stage it just for this performance and all theater works on this uh, uh, production and uh, the, the um, in repertoire theater like tamper is a repertoire theater the same system uh, yeah um, two weeks it's a very big period sometimes it's three days but not for the the big uh, performance with puppets and uh, um, it was surprised for me that the big performance with puppets we don't have technic time because the objects it's like actors we need time to work with that maybe it's uh, not typical maybe it just uh, with this production uh, but it's very strange but we have very interesting decisions yeah, yeah, yeah. just a short comment about the night programming I've been doing it for 35 years with the extensive stage, valuable stage time and I'm getting quite tired of it so we would need uh, if we have ambitious visual things to achieve on stage, we need time for it, definitely. I agree with yes. you. Yes. And I like uh, the daytime, and yes. daytime rehearsals and nighttime programming, I'm kind of too old for that. But uh, now the uh, Finnish uh, light designer used uh, night time for his work. It's not okay for me. I uh, will be glad uh, if he uh, will have time, normal time. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but maybe uh, but now we have really interesting picture and uh, episode and maybe it will be start point to understand that we need time for magic with objects like invention of theater. But in Russia, uh, it's not the ideal situation. Um, but may maybe uh, before the war we uh, had uh, uh, ten, um, maybe ten years like a uh, theatre artist revolution. It yeah. was like a big festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Xenia. I, I think that when we are discussing about these practical things, we are at the same time discussing. Uh, our attitudes and uh, what's the our artist role in a society and and it's in the end uh, in relation to question of or purpose of art and theater mm -hmm. uh, so no, now uh, I think that we thank you and I invite the uh, next panel members uh, here and we have perhaps two minutes break for um, technical issues yeah, yeah.
Tuomas Norvio, tunnistatko? Ja sitten Oskar Bergs. No, jos näyttää nimestä niin varmaan. Joo, no, kun on varmaan kahvia
Okei, täällä on valmista. Eli voimme jatkaa seuraavaan tuota, tuota, osuuteen, Raisa, ole hyvä. Okei, onko meillä kaikki salissa suurpiirteiden Hyvä. Okei, ja sitten mennään. So, dear audience, my name is Raisa Kilpeläinen. I'm the lecturer in performance design here at the Uniarts Helsinki's Theatre Academy and also Welcome to the VES seminar also on my behalf. And first of all, thank you, Xenia, for the, for the opening part and good luck for the Tampere Meri Monster production. And it was very interesting to have you here as a guest, first guest. And then this next session is about being, going, doing international as a professional. And um, it's a professional panel with three performance designers and their thoughts on being international and working internationally. We have Oskar Dempsey, Piet Pietien and Tuomas Norvio here. And if you have questions to the panelists, so please write them down, we can take them later on. Or then if you have something very acute to say, just raise your hand, we'll bring you the mic. Let's please use the mic, Tuomas has it there so that we get the sound also to the live, live. Um, and hi, by the way, also to the people there online. I just looked that there are, there are viewers, that's great. And this is also, I guess, viewable afterwards, this, this seminar, so you will find it at the UniArts YouTube channel. Yes. And um, then, yeah, as a, as a kind of moderator here now, thanks for the possibility. I would like to just in the beginning, a couple of very short thoughts about uh, how does the, let's say, knowledge of internationality kind of build up. So I would somehow think it in, in kind of cycles that maybe in the core, in the middle there is, are the values, the attitudes, the interests and the courage of an individual. And then if we go, go over to the next cycle, that's something that's called here in Finland kotikansainvälisyys, which is kind of the home internationality or the inner internationality, which, which means that includes uh, homes, families, communities, schools and different backgrounds. And then the next cycle maybe is the national or the local internationality. Then we go over to the global, globals. And then I would also throw uh, up that what if there is also, or I would e even agree that there is also this planetary uh, levels of the internationalities and inter Inter different intra actions and rhizomes and ecosystems and everything. And so that internationality is many overlapping cycles. That's my opening words to this, this um, panel. Yeah, but now I propose that Oscar is first, then we have Pietu and then Tuomas, and first of all, the short presentations from each of you and we will be seeing also images and pictures and so on. So, yeah. Okay, hi, so my name is Oscar Dempsey and I'm from Northern Ireland. Uh, so, because of its unique uh, history, it means I'm both a British and an Irish citizen. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a sonographer and a visual artist, um, but I have interests in crafts and interior and uh, 
costume design. Um, I've chosen four different images um, um, to kind of represent my work in the different countries that I've lived in so far. So there's um, an image from my show in Ireland, uh, uh, an image from my exhibition degree show in England, um, a production in Finland, and then also a, yeah, the production in Prague. Um, but um, yeah, my personal uh, interests are creating playful and organic kind of objects, whether they're sets or sculptures or installations. Um, and uh, this is kind of a attempt at sort of exploring what, what is just defined as the sublime, which is the idea of sort of something being very overwhelming, but very beautiful, such as the experience of like looking out of the ocean or looking over a cliff, um, and also exploring kind of a sense of materiality. Um, and I was thinking about it that I think in my experience, um, my experience of working internationally has been kind of my uh, living in different countries and working there. So I think my experience comes from that rather than doing a lot of international touring. Um, so I think it's been, for me, like a really personal drive, both for my artistic uh, experience and my artistic uh, career, but also personally that I really have enjoyed and got a lot from moving to different countries and learning about the local knowledge there and learning about the local scenes and then kind of trying to build up some sort of network. Um, so I think I've got a lot from that. And from what I've learned so far in my time, it's been extremely like inspirational um, and also gives you the ability to have like a more freedom of expression that maybe you feel more uh, free to express things um, if you were maybe say from your home country. Um, but it's also very challenging, um, of course, going to new countries and trying to start from scratch and learning new people and new methods. Um, but it's a very good challenge to evolve your career and your approach. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, just a, a kind of quick timeline or whatever of, of my career so yeah I lived in Northern Ireland but then I did my uh, bachelor's in fine art in England um, and while I was there I did an exchange uh, in a art academy in Unza in Denmark um, and for me that was like a really uh, formational experience because it was kind of my first time living outside the UK and Ireland and it was really um, eye-opening um, and so because of that after I graduated I moved to Copenhagen and I was there for two years and doing an internship at uh, Hotel Proforma, which is an experimental theatre company. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I met another Finnish designer, Fabian Nuborg, and then he was telling me about Finland and Alto. <laughs> and then that's how I ended up here. Um, and I was studying um, my master's in design for performing arts at Alto when I was there, and Lisa was my tutor. And, but since then, I've been working uh, on different projects here. So, yeah, I think that's maybe a bit enough introduction about me. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Maybe a short question. What sure. are you up to now? What's, what's yeah, uh, so I'm, uh, I was just working on a, a game in, uh, performance um, called Upotapia with Kaigen Kaskus, or Center for Everything, and it's showing um, at the moment in Subirati, in the Gasukello. Um, but its last performance is tonight, <laughs> and it's uh, sold out, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for me. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been very nice and interesting to work with. Yeah. Thank you, Oscar. Thanks. Then Pietu next. Hi, uh, my name is Pietu Pieti, and I graduated from uh, VAS from this school uh, end of nineties, I believe ninety nine. Uh, I've chosen, this is the only video, a few images of my recent things, uh, projects I've been involved in. But briefly, before coming to VAS, I lived in Sweden for five years in Stockholm, working in, in a small theatre and driving taxi. Uh, uh, and after VAS st studies and graduating MA, I think 99 it was. I've been working quite broadly, uh, doing mostly lighting and lately also video design. 
back then it was possible to study also sound design at the same time. So in the era of uh, mini discs and CD players and a rack of them, I was also doing some some sound. But that's the recent, most recent one is like 20 years ago. So maybe I should just leave sound behind me. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, uh, the exa recent examples, my work has been moving a bit also because of COVID, but also for personal reasons, moving a bit away from stage arts or theater, also to contemporary installations and contemporary art. Uh, this example, can we jump back? To, is, it, is somebody operating the slides? We could jump yes, back to the video is. I had in the start, since they are in random order. This is Venice Biennial 22. Uh, Dutch pavilion, Bita Razavi, was the other Estonian artist. Estonians borrowed the Dutch pavilion in Giardini in, in Venezia. This is a time lapse of 13 minutes. One spectator, while I was taking the time lapse, noticed that there's something weird happening. Nobody else noticed. We had a track of a moving light up on the roof, imitating how the sunlight, how the daylight behaves in the space. Of course, us professionals, we can see from the shadows already that it's, the, the light source is close and not the sun. But I think 99% of the spectators did it, didn't realize this. So there were some branches and leaves up there and some fans moved it, moving them. We were trying to kind of artific artificially imitate how the daylight behaves in the space and take it in control. Quite complicated project with Estonian technicians, super professional team, uh, and relatively low budget, actually. Uh, the Dutch borrowed the pavilion to Estonians because their presentation was th that was in the church. I've been working a few times in Venice. It's super interesting. I'm at the moment negotiating with a couple of productions also for next spring's art. By biennial, and I was installing some architecture biennial thing that I'm actually going to dismantle in a month. Trying to avoid flying nowadays, I drove, for example, there with van with the equipment, and I've been driving quite a lot to Europe when working, trying to combine uh, taking things with me and tools and materials and gather the money for traveling by land rather than flying, since Traveling by land is often more than 10 times more expensive and it's more time consuming. So uh, not possible always, but sometimes it is. So uh, once by train and I think at least six times by car, I've been working in, in Europe during the past few years. So that's that about Venice. Uh, the next slide example would be Berlin. There was production with the Finnish art institutes in Europe uh, this is the German Institute for Finnish Art. Uh, Kindle Beer Factory, uh, in, an installation with four channel video, four subwoofers by Tatu Nenonen, the subwoofer specialist who helped us with an art piece. Uh, lighting and if we can keep the, this yeah, Kindle Beer Factory thing, this came later on to Helsinki as well. This saved my year 21. Everything was closed because of Covid. But this exhibition in Berlin could be open for 10 people at the time who booked in advance and had the COVID uh, certificate from the same day. Same day. So mm -hmm. in Berlin that time, 22 summer, you had to go in the morning to have a COVID test. And then you could first, after having the negative COVID test on your telephone, you could go to a shop or a bus or a train or anywhere. So it was practically quite closed down society and there was huge queues to all the COVID test points in the morning. I found out quite, quite quickly that I don't have to pay for it since they just state at the test points that just give whatever Berlin address and you get it for free. So mm -hmm. uh, just a small thing about that. Uh, but the, uh, the production was um, a one hour loop with four different pieces from four different artists, video and sound work, and one work was only working with infrasound. Uh, so it was all programmed from my MacBook uh, that I had remote control to, and I had the surveillance camera in the space so I could see what's happening. 
and uh, was it team viewer or jump desktop so i could the, the display was on for 5 weeks so i could kind of remotely check that everything's cool so one macbook taking care of four videos lighting situation it been in between the artists uh, 12 channel sound and the infrasound piece and it was a super interesting production that then came also to helsinki uh, next uh, thing would be anna pavilainen play rape uh, Anna quit as an actress, made, uh, made a piece about it and went on to film career. I was involved as her designer and technician when we were touring. Uh, this is a bad image, but just a reminder from Dresden. Uh, lecture one, cooperate if possible. Uh, we, that's where, where we met. I, was in, I, I heard there's another production from Finland on the same festival, so we kind of cooperated. I was also your lighting technician, so like less traveling, <laughs> less traveling, uh, since we were after each other on the same stage. And one more lesson, uh, be flexible if you can. In this case, uh, we didn't have a production office or producer or, and the German festivals, they wanted to, somebody to send an invoice. So, okay, my company has an EU VAT VAT number. So I ended up being the producer of the foreign tours. And since I can do it, I was able to promise that, okay, let's do it so that I kind of send the invoice, I pay for the flights and hotels, and I pay Anna's salary. And then the only argument we had that she wanted to have less and I wanted to give her more, so we were fighting about that. Since she was the director, actor, and uh, author of the piece, so I wanted her to have more money. But now she's doing film career, and the performance, I hope it survives and lives on with some other actresses. Anna said she won't play this herself, it's too personal for her. If you know the case, play rape. Yes. Yeah. It's been also shown here to yeah. the students a couple of years ago. Yes. Uh, then the next example. Uh, this image I have for one reason. There's a designer, Marco Piri. I was di doing his uh, design and glass exhibition tour in Italy, in Rome, Firenze and uh, Ven Venice. This is Firenze, the party where there's the mayor of the town, the ambassadors, and the owner of the palace where we exhibited, uh, Riccardo de Medici Palazzo. And this is not Riccardo de Medici Palazzo. There's the guy who owns this. This is his living room from 14th century or something with the paintings. It looks like really like Firenze. It's just next to the river Po. So here I've been on, on like fancy banquets and, and dinners, but here this is 2018. I'm doing lighting for the exhibition. Here is like I concretely realized how different the system is in, for example, Mediterranean countries or wherever in the world except Scandinavia. That to, be, to, su to support yourself as an artist, uh, be rich. Uh, do art that sells or have rich friends like mecenates or sponsors and in this case the exhibition was sponsored by the, by the owner of Palazzo di Medici uh, his name wasn't any longer Medici it was maybe some other family that bought the palace or whatever mm. so kind of a good example like, like centuries of history of, of uh, the, the artist being working for some rich people for example here painting the walls and ceiling like 600 years ago. Pietro, five minutes for, yes. <laughs> left for, for your first part. Okay, uh, next, uh, uh, just briefly, uh, Anne Teresa de Kiesmaker, my friend Minna Tikkanen, also graduated from here, the most successful contemporary dance lighting designer from Finland at the moment. They wanted something since they were performing outdoors last summer in, in uh, Italy. So we, uh, they hired me and the video mapping on a, on an outdoor thing in Italy. Uh, let's not talk about this more, but uh, it was super interesting project. Here, uh, what I'm doing right now, this is today is the second last day of this exhibition in London. It's called Illusionaries. In the center, we have artist Arash Irandust, who lives in Finland. And my lesson: I met Arash briefly four years ago and helped helped him for free with some video production, really low budget thing. After four years, he calls me that meanwhile, he's been doing these fancy immersive Van Gogh and Frida Kahlo mm -hmm. 
uh, things like worldwide, animating them. So his friends in London had suggested him that uh, let's do a production with your designs. And Aras calls me that, hey, can you come and do the technical planning and AV and mapping, video mapping. So that's been kind of the lesson. Uh, whenever being friendly and helping someone can lead to like whatever. This is economically quite OK to me. To, I'm, I'm going there to change to next exhibition in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's maybe not artistically super interesting since it's more like experience, wow thing. Here's a mirror room and then there's another projection room, another smoke room and so on. But kind of imitating Yaoi Kusama things but with help of video and all the other surfaces are mirror. But yeah, lesson, be friendly to people so it might lead to <laughs> weird projects. We are now negotiating both South, uh, South uh, America and Iran with similar productions. Uh, next would be, uh, is, if there is any more, uh, from the same, same installation. This is the entrance corridor. Uh, we can go further. Ah, another example, I was spending three weeks in Germany in Bochum City Theatre. Uh, they have an interesting co concept with Sara Turunen company. This is their second production in Bochum. They do so, Sara Turunen, who has originally directed both of parts of the trilogy, first Medus and Huone, and then this one is uh, Fruits, Fru Fruchte der Vernunft, Järjen Hedelmat. The concept is to take all the parts of the performance to Bochum and just replace the actors with German-speaking actors. In three weeks uh, rehearsal period, we did this. And, uh, it's possible with professional actors and with help of like looking at the video, how, how they did in Finland. <laughs> and while we were coming back with the set on a, from a gig from in Antwerp uh, earlier this spring, we just left the set already uh, in, in Bochum and set it up there. Milja Aho is the set designer, Ada Halonen is the lighting designer, Tuuli Kyttälä, sound designer, and then there was some video. I was involved like doing other people's design, taking care of light, sound and video in the rehearsals. Uh, we were communicating remotely with Ada about the solutions. For example, in this case, making the shadow thing or Ada's original idea better. Uh, the thing in German theatre tradition is that uh, lighting managers used to be kind of below, artistically below directors and set designers. Here they had just gone through a change recently that the first lighting designer got kind of the title designer after being lighting manager for 15 years, uh, Circo. He was helping us also with this one. So we ended up having, I think it's the first German professional theater production ever having three lighting designers mentioned in the program <laughs> since there was both Ada, me and Circo. And I didn't want to be there, but Circo wanted to be mentioned as a designer since it was important to him. So we <laughs> so this is a three di designer production with an interesting concept how to, how to export stage arts to different language, mm -hmm. export everything else and replace the actors and it's possible. Uh, next. Uh, another Venice thing, I'll, I'll not talk about this, it's uh, Angela Su, also 22 Venice Biennial, but uh, let's go further. Uh, French thing, production in Visambu, also during Covid times. Um, totally closed up city, you couldn't, couldn't walk in the evenings without having a, a, like proof on your phone to show to the police that you are coming from work. Like total lockdown in in uh, West France. I was working, I was working uh, one rehearsal season ses ses session in France in Visambu, so that I had also a remote camera and remote control to one MacBook who was taking care of video and lights. It was possible to have the Millumin software to control also lights since we were using only conventional lights. So the lights programming was easier, but we had a six channel video that was more complicated in the same software. There was less than one second delay, so I could almost operate the rehearsals from Finland. <laughs> but okay, I was mainly doing the corrections and communication with help of the remote control and actually it was the technicians 
doing pressing the go button since there was a lot of exact timings. But anyway, possible to work remotely. Technically, it, it actually helps. Uh, and I think that was my last one. Sorry for the long int introduction, but just no, taking up different I think like we are in the it, yes, yeah. pretty much so. So thanks, Pietu, and then Thomas turn. Yes, hello, yeah, I'm Thomas Lordio, sound designer and sound artist musician. And yes, I had random pictures, and but this is where I come from, from music and bands, and and that's kind of a. My starting point was, was to play in bands and we toured with, with Rinne Radio and, and with Vimme, Vimme Band and Johan Juhola. And that, uh, as they are kind of marginal music, it, it meant going abroad and seeing different venues, seeing very, yeah, very different places and audiences. And then I also started a bit later working with Kimmo Pohjonen as a front of house and electronic stuff, and there I got to got to know like um, very different venues and from a front of house point and and seeing different concert halls and get the familiar like different working cultures and uh, yeah feeling people and how how to communicate with people because I think the most important thing. As an, from more, as a maybe more technical, but also as a designer to communicate. Is it even within an artist group, or or with with the outside people? And that can be very different than with different cultural backgrounds. And and sometimes that can lead lead into interesting. Uh, situations and, and it's also about how to write about your work when you're going to a gig or to a tour. I think it needs a lot of pre-work emails and then like to get to know that uh, of course yeah it's important to have a specific tech writers and and be specific and make pictures and so on but you never really know before contacting the people that how they take it and what we're up to when we go there. And I, I, I feel that it's especially important for, for going abroad that to do this work. And if, if there's a problem when we go there, because then we have the one day set up or the same game set up, if there's a problem, I think it's always been a problem of not communicating, not being in contact before and not clearing things up. And maybe I sometimes go a bit too far of it, but I think it's better to do that and to be clear about things. And nobody's getting nervous about that. It's getting nervous when things are not clear. And, and it's also for my own work and protection, getting my work done as, as best as possible. But it's, of course, about all, all the work or for, for, for the other artists, for, for the performance and for so on to really know that we can do it as it's supposed to be done. Uh, but yeah, that's, I, I started from, from bands and then uh, in like mid-2000 I, I was asked to do sound design for Contemporary Circus and I started doing that and that's how I got into the sound design and making music for performing arts. And at that time it, it was, and well, still as circus, it's background history, it's about traveling. Uh, so they always been really international working groups. Uh, and that's, I believe so much what Pietu said, that yes, you, you get to know people, you be kind, you do your work well, then you get contacts. I, for me, it's, it's all about that, that's how I always get to work here and, and, and abroad that I work with somebody, there's some new people in the group, you get to know them, maybe yeah, four years later, mm -hmm. somebody calls, emails, and that's how you again end up to some, with, to work with some other people. And uh, 
especially that's how I feel in, 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 in music, in bands, I think it's a bit, it's, for me, that's, at least it's more about really, it's really about personal, but, but in, in performing arts, I think the artist group can be more diverse and, and you kind of uh, can have a one project and then to feel. So, so especially that is, yeah, great to go and just to see what happens. Jump, jump to a different group. Um, and nowadays, uh, I also been doing installations and sound as in sound art or just sound. And of course, that's also because of COVID a, a lot. Because before COVID, yeah, it was a lot of touring and more music in bands. Then the COVID came. That all stopped. I also, we all, all had to think for what to do and, but fortunately there were a couple of projects happening at the, at the time and they still continued. So I got to go deeper into things like multi-channel sound and got really yeah, looking for the technology side of some stuff and go into that because before that it's, it was a bit more hectic. So I think the COVID calming down Fortunately, we somehow survived. So, but that also maybe gave us all some time to for something. And so now I've been making some, some just connecting with with different visual artists or or just on my own to make some installations. And uh, and in uh, contemporary dance has been maybe my, my main job for the last years and and. I've been really yeah, fortunate to keep on working with, with some same people so we can deepen things and, and continue some things, some thoughts in, in the performance. So it's not just about one performance, it's more about things that we can evolve and focus. And, and it's also been uh, interesting to see. I, I think, yeah, in, in, in these projects and in, in contemporary dance, I, I think. It's also about now that the dance groups, dancers and, and the, uh, some designers, yeah, they come also from abroad. It's not just our Finnish circles. And it's nice to feel different people and feel how their background is, is very different. Even, yeah, the body and how they move, but how they are and how they talk. Uh, it's it's about always us carrying the background. So in 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 performing arts, I think it's a big advantage. So we can deep dive into things, and it brings six different things to the surface. That's how I feel, and it, that's been really great to see that happening. And yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is it, is it there? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thank you, everybody. There has been also pictures from the mm. pro, uh, productions of uh, Tuomas and and yes. like like the others too. So. Yeah. Yes, but let's go to the questions. Then we have a couple of questions preset here. So I would like to um, discuss with you um, first of all maybe something about the differences and similarities. There also were a lot of them in your speeches now, but, but um, and then maybe also I would add that is there such um, um, practices you have adopted to your own, pra own practices or your own working? So differences, similarities, some examples can be very concrete ones or or then, yeah. Well, I, I can attach this, like uh, planning in advance. The Germans, mm -hmm. whoa. <laughs> uh, three weeks rehearsal period in end of August. So the schedule, hour by hour, all people present was ready Excel in, in March, I think. So half a year in advance. They had mm -hmm. the exact schedule of everybody who was there at what time. If I if I went to the States like one hour too early, they were like, what are you doing here? <laughs> if we wanted to ask that uh, uh, 
the, there's the camera, could we put it on, so record the run through so I could make the corrections. Mm, the video guy is not here, so we can. So it's like positive and negative, mm. like the two like strict advanced planning and two strict departments on, on. So that's, I think, I find that like really German. There's a tradition of high professionalism, but really like everybody has just their time and things what they do and then they don't do anything else outside those times or outside the working area. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, is it similar or is it, is it just me believing in this really German thing? But Have you others met this? Or similar to some kind of yeah, same? Yeah, when I was thinking about this, like, uh, I was thinking, yeah, the, these pra quite practical things and one of the, the biggest things I was thinking about was just like this local knowledge that, that really helps for, at least for, for me as a designer, that these very practical things of where can I buy things, where can I make things, who do I contact, mm -hmm. that you can kind of take for granted when you're living somewhere for a quite while, you have all this knowledge which you've acquired over your experience, but then when you're working internationally or abroad that you don't really have this experience and then you're functioning quite differently of how do I get to know this, who do I contact sort of thing. Mm. And, but at least it's uh, interesting for me that um, working in Finland it, it, it has been an international experience, but then the longer I've lived here, it's then becoming, I guess, more of a national experience of, for me, work, like, working locally here. Um, and then been interesting trying to, because there's constantly using this uh, comparison of how do you, Finns work, how do things work here, how do things work where I've been before, and then you're using this comparison tool uh, a lot, and yeah, I find that quite interesting mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think if I say that we Finns, I would say that we are quite easily like um, working as designers, working like um, hands-on mm -hmm. by ourselves pretty much too, because we have that kind of training often that we have been trained to do things by ourselves too. So, so I think we are even quite good at that at, mm -hmm. in in some things. But 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 also there are also working. Uh, there are also that kind of theaters and and working areas that you just you are not allowed to do it. You can't do it, like Pietro yeah. said. You can't just put your camera there and and start recording, yeah. or you just can't, can't go and pay, or or even like touch the console or something yeah, like yeah. this. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I was I was lucky to be able to touch the console after like one week's negotiation, since I wanted to do the color palette and we didn't really have the time, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, their working time got over. So I kind of, after getting the, <laughs> the people to trust me, I, I kind of was allowed to be, do some programming my, on my own, but it, it wasn't clear from the start. And I think that's more typical worldwide now that it is, the, the technologies are so complicated that you are actually not even allowed to. You can't. You you go to the venue. You cannot put the sound gear on, and mm -hmm. and uh, you need to wait for the sound technician. Yeah, that's on. also the skills of the designer that yeah. you can then ask to yeah. ask for things, mm -hmm. and and you know. But uh, also one more question to Oscar concerning this: How about when you have um, experience on training from from the education from different countries? So how about educationally? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, overall, I really enjoyed my uh, my experience here, and I was really amazed, um, mostly economically, that I was able to study here for free, and that when I was doing courses, I was being supplied with a lot of resources and funding, which was completely opposite to when I studied in England, where I had to pay for absolutely everything, and it really changes the attitude and what's possible for students. Yeah. So I was really in, impressed by that, and then I think. Um, both studying and professionally, like I really sensed that there was a, um, a discussion around the expansion of the definition of roles, so that when we come as a group, how we define ourselves and our roles, that it was, it really felt expanded for me that it was saying like, although I'm a set designer, we can all have a discussion together and maybe I double with this and double with this. And that was new for me because I was so used to being like, if you're this role, you stay in that role. And um, so that was kind of interesting. But I guess that's also reflecting maybe changing values in different countries, that it's um, maybe going from a less performer-centric role to ex expansion of definition of uh, our roles as designers mm -hmm. and our influence. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, that's a good, good um, comment. You mentioned local knowledge, uh, like professional productions abroad, especially where language barrier, maybe like Mediterranean countries or East Europe, where people don't really easily, especially technical stuff, don't really easily communicate in English. Mm -hmm. So it helps hugely to have mm -hmm. some local whatever assistance or help to, to mm -hmm. deal with on, with their language. Mm -hmm. for, exa for example, in Italy I now have, now have been using the same friend of mine as an assistant there to, and I pay him to come and assist me in the, in the productions we're doing and also doing the communication in Italian, dealing with rental companies, let's mm -hmm. say boat transport in Venezia and so on. So it is so easier to, to deal with since... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think in, in the venue it's again about building a trust. Yeah. Like it, and it, it can, can start from, from a lot before you go there and then but of course there's language thing and then about the venue and the, the house but but still I think if, if we're doing um, yeah creating a piece somewhere abroad I think it's really really important to get that the trust within the house uh, people and then then yeah it helps to really create them to have maybe then you can maybe touch more things and, and to work. If you want to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Many of us still are a bit hands-on, maybe even too much. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So are there still some like very concrete concrete practices or, or ways of working still? Do you still recall some of them to share here now? Like what have you learned from the other colleagues abroad or the other ways of working? Is there something you have adapted to your own like professional skills? I guess I'm thinking from a very uh, also practical point of view where I've really uh, appreciated the larger discussion within Finland but also in Nordic and Scandinavian countries of the a much more balance of life and work, um, which I've really tried to take in and work on. Of, of um, and also of the importance of like uh, the values and equality of pay. That so that at least I've really benefited and from living and working within Nordic countries that I feel I'm getting a fair and valued pay to as opposed to when I've been working in other countries for for free or or whatever. Um, but it's helped me when moving forward as a designer to to know my um, to know my value and to state my rights and what I think is fair. Mm. Um, so at least I've really taken that and it's been very um, core to working. Yeah, I think this is the part of the kind of the bigger bigger topic that uh, sustainability topic somehow the mm. social sustainability, mm. let's say, for example. Mm. In, yeah. in this field, for example, so that also has lots of differences and also similarities internationally, mm. certainly. Yeah, and I guess and I think you were like touching about that. Each country has like its own history and culture, uh, which then forms the designers and creative people within it, and then their attitude towards working within the arts or what art they make. And so it's that kind of really practical thing that can really form the people. Um, as if a country can be more yeah, competitive or capitalist or going towards something that's more entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. these things can really form the, the people. Yeah. 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 I found like <coughs> recently, but also earlier, the, the image of technicians, stage technicians, roadies, the technical crew from let's say last millennium, was that they were a bit drunk and uh, <laughs> smoking pot and uh, like being lazy and wanting actually to do something else than what they are doing. Let's say stage, ordinary stage technician with low salary. But I've been encountering extremely professional and proud uh, technicians in Spain and, and uh, Estonia and like places you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. that are highly skilled in what they do. Not only Germany, but like mm -hmm. and. Uh, and proud of it, mm -hmm. and it's it's been like uh, also 
it, it has changed also here. But coming, let's say, 90s from Finland, I was first amazed to, to, to meet these people. Expectations would be, I've, I have the opposite also. I have, I've had the drunken lighting manager in, in Russia uh, and, and so on. So, so the ex expectations the, in advance, you would think that these people are like, like you would expect the Russians to be or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, mostly the experiences there have been really positive. So, so, so they also earn respect, the people you, you're going to work with mm -hmm. in 99% of the cases. Uh, and you can you can actually let them to do the work and communicate in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. So next, I would like to ask you that: How about the forms of collaboration? Uh, have the forms of collaboration changed? How do you think? And and then to collaborate internationally, and then also. Corona is now mentioned here many times already, but but how about during Corona times? So you can also take some examples of that. But collaboration and it's like transformation and, and new ways and so on. So are there such? As mentioned earlier, like this Zoom Teams, mm -hmm. mm. Google meetings, they have become like part of any production mm. and it's not only negative actually mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, like it's good to avoid unnecessary traveling in in general mm. so and it is totally valid way of cooperating in mm. in in my opinion even if you don't then it's like even more fun to meet the people for real mm. after mm. a couple of zoom meetings yeah. and i think it helps you really then give the responsibility to these people is maybe less of that yeah, like when, when the artistic team is cooperating with over remote things, I think then you and have to take more responsibility of what, what's really happening then and mm -hmm. at least maybe work even more within the deadlines <laughs> and mm -hmm. because we appreciate more each, each time those minutes in, in the, yeah, may, maybe. And, and yeah, and for, for personally, it's also that as the touring, from my point of view, the touring is still a lot less less than before before COVID. It means maybe making these performances like like the Tsara Turunen, mm. that you have the production, but then you don't tour with it with that group. But but then you go to make that production to somewhere else, mm. and then they tour more locally. I think that has changed. Maybe, mm. but that's how I feel that that at least in. Yeah, we've been commissioned to do to some projects mm -hmm. somewhere else, and then they have their own performers for, for the Paris piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually got just yesterday a message from the producer of this production that it got selected to the touring program of the Bofum. Mm -hmm. And that will be interesting, like who will be touring with it since <laughs> do they have like uh, touring technicians and crew, or do they need mm. people from Finland and so on? Like, like, um, like or is it you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm replaceable. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Everybody is. Yeah. Uh, the, the funny thing with the, this, like le participating in the re remote uh, Zoom meetings, like the level of participating, that's kind of a totally new routine. You can. Uh, only like if it's not really concerning you what they're talking about, you can have the camera and mic off <laughs> and do something else. Or then if, if it's really concerning you and you want to be active, then it's like camera and mic on and all the time. <laughs> and, and all the ways in between. So that's totally new routines, not only internationally, but in a way you can have the whole world in in totally different way in your living room than what was the routines, let's say, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I was thinking the with the effects of coronavirus that it, it kind of, um, well, it affects it obviously a lot. And I think uh, it, in addition to that, it brought up a lot of bigger conversations, yeah, about like international traveling. And then I feel like it also kind of was pushing people in opposite directions where maybe some people were very much wanting to focus on local and kind of stay mm -hmm. local. And, but then also the say lack of personal uh, live experiences were really driving people in the opposite direction of like wanting to really have a live experience and really see people or to go to different countries or to collaborate 
with different countries. Um, so it's, yeah, I was thinking about that and I forgot my last point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I think also with, with Corona and generally like a larger point that generally things are being pushed more online and then it's, but it's also giving more acceptance to other mediums of digital performances or things being online uh, or referencing that as opposed to being things being uh, on stage or physical. Um, and well, that can have various like knock-on effects, um, but at least it seems that it's expanding the definition and in a sense of also that maybe the quality is different when things are live, but it's also more democratic process that mm -hmm. uh, more people can work online and access the, mm -hmm. the content from different countries. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Good point. Mm, then one more point concerning this collaboration thing that how about the other use of technology? Have you any examples? Um, other use, uh, other means than, than this, um, like distance meetings and so on, but other technological uh, points of view. Then, yeah, I really think that yeah, it was great for 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 the remote control of, yeah. <laughs> of computers. Yeah. It really went forward. Like, you can stream multi-channel audio now, basically, on, which is so low latency and so on. That that wasn't really that much happening. Mm -hmm before and, and now it's so easy to control yeah things uh, yeah. far away and yeah the remote options with the softwares like team viewer or mm -hmm. jump desktop I'm at the moment controlling the exhibition in London and it's a, it's a good possibility to be like even maybe not shows but like rehearsals mm -hmm. as I was doing with the French example I have another example of Museum of Non-Humanity I was doing for Tereke Haapoja and Laura Gustafsson, the technical setup. They, they had exhibited with 13 projector setup in Taipei Biennial, maybe 2020, before COVID anyway. Mm. But I didn't want to t travel to tai Taiwan. I just sent the uh, media players, bright sign players we rented in Finland with the content, asked them to put the media players online so I can change the content. And I sent them a 3D that this is how I want the projectors and the screens to be. Install it, please. And then we were remotely working, like somebody had to be in Taiwan at 6 o'clock in the morning yeah. when I was like <laughs> in other... And Terike was in New York, so it, it was actually really difficult for the time zones to agree things so that it wasn't an inconvenient time for someone mm -hmm. working like globally like this remotely. That's the kind of you wouldn't think about that before. Mm. The time zone problem. Yeah, that's a good concrete mm. example. Mm. Still yeah, some. Or yeah, I was like a, I think I really I really appreciate the like um, various di digital content, but at least a, a side effect for me from Corona and the rise of like this was like actually pushing me towards more uh, wanting. Uh, very physical materiality and my work of like working with very craft based and physical stuff so for me it's kind of pushed me in more in that direction but it's it's this difficult uh, conversation of when you feel um, generally things are going towards a direction you're like do I jump on board or do I stick to you know what I'm enjoying and at least one example was when this year when I went to the Prague uh, the PQ and I was looking around and I was noticing the, or I was comparing to the last one and it just really felt like this year there was like 1,000 QR codes and that every single piece had a QR code mm -hmm. and uh, it was really different from the last one and I'm not sure how much I enjoyed it <laughs> because I, <laughs> cause it just, I, I didn't want to um, be on my phone, I wanted mm -hmm. to yeah. go to the installations and enjoy them. <laughs> Same problem in Helsinki, <laughs> know this year I think. Yes. Yeah, but it was, it was really noticeable. The, the, and, and also, especially the, with PQ having this four-year period, I really noticed the uh, effect of the Ukraine invasion and also um, coronavirus, how it had a, a really wide-scale effect on other countries mm. and, um, and what kind of work they were producing. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we have to move towards to this last question, and then we can open it up to the audience after that. But 
some advices for students interested in international work and going international. There has become, there has been also a, a list of them. Pietu, for example, started with good points. I can maybe find them somewhere here. It was something like this: cooperate and be flexible and and be rich. Oh no, it was um, <laughs> yeah. recog- no, it was recognizing the cultural backgrounds and differences. Maybe uh, well, be friendly, help the colleagues. This kind of things when mentioned, but but could you everybody sum up somehow some points that uh, to to uh, as as advices for students? Yeah. yeah, at least I think also when giving advice, it would both be for students and for teachers or the people in charge of the institutions mm-hmm. or guiding the students. That, but it, yeah, I think similar. Just it's really important and um, to expand your network and to expand your horizons and. That can be through like a variety of things of like Erasmus exchange or uh, exchange initiatives or independent open calls in different countries. But I think also it can uh, function very informally, where it's like you know befriending other people uh, in your group or having the chance to see different performances or artworks in, in different countries if you have the opportunity. Um, and and then I said like for. I think also it's, it's it's like really topical at the moment, especially since all, many of the schools here are having the occupation thing of the bigger question of internationality and also not just uh, encouraging people here to go abroad, but also what depiction we have of working in Finland globally mm-hmm. and how that can have an effect on people internationally, whether wanting to come here or not. So I think it's very important to discuss that and when people are coming here to also give them the support as well mm. but uh yeah and but uh, yeah i think overall like it, it can be really really beneficial to to have these experiences and expand your network internationally if it's possible thank you then... mm, i'm thinking about language about many of the technicians not speaking english so well so I, i've been trying to communicate in languages which i really cannot speak well like like spanish or italian or german or french i can some so it helps and i can tell them that you can speak your french and i can speak english and let's try to communicate and then there's a, an old book that nowadays is an app for iphone or i think also android called theater words mm-hmm. yes. where there's like application for all kinds of theater mechanisms with special words that you can just show the image and then there's the word for on in, in every language i think My it's Oystad international yeah it is uh, still in in my use so uh, in like everyday practical things if you need to instruct people who really don't understand you it helps a lot so yeah Good maybe uh, sorry yeah maybe <laughs> There's a huge worldwide problem called climate change. So, so finding strategies to to try to not to fly, finding strategies to find vegan food where you go, and so on. Like uh, thinking of the ecological footprint of your production worldwide. Generally, that's things to think about in in also in international productions. I have an example of a. Contemporary artist called Tino Segal, who has been within the contemporary art scene, who has been doing like performance-like things for a couple of decades already. He refuse, He and his crew refuses to fly anywhere. So he can. He can have a production with 40 international dancers involved. For example, in Castel Documenta six years ago, and none of them fly. All of them travel by boat and train. So it is in the production budget that mm-hmm. there's time frame and money for not flying. Mm-hmm. So so it is possible, for example, to. I don't know where he finds the money from. Mm. Re- resources. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Do no. Do yeah, you I have something to add still? Hands on. I, yeah. I think it, this is at least from my point of view still a really hands on profession. So I. Uh, and that can mean so many things that I, I think, yeah, to just to encourage to be brave to to meet new 
kind of sides of, of the job, meaning that not just concentrate on, on one, one way of doing you that you know, which is also good to be really know what you're doing, but, but then that, that means that you can meet people that you thought you would not meet and, and also get, get some knowledge of some, ah, this is, well, it's maybe too abstract, but you know, I'm talking about knowing different ways of doing the same thing. It, depending, it can be technology or just the way of doing it one speaker or ten speaker or with one performer or ten performer and then who's focusing on what. So just then that means then you meet people. Also. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have to mention now because there was uh, um, uh, thoughts about sustainability. There is a good possibility to tell you now that um, there is a new book recently launched. It's called Sustainable Choices. Editors are Tomi Humalisto and me, and it's um, a selection of articles about the sustain contemporary sustainability issues in, in, in um, performance design, both locally and globally. And it's about, educa uh, about the pedagogics and the working methods and, and different, like, Lots of those open questions we have, and, and how, how how we are are st staying with this trouble together. And Lisa is, for example, one of the writers, and and we have international guest writers too in this book. So it will it's in the in the web uh, taiju.uniarts.fi. That's the publication archive of UniArts, and you can you can find and load it there freely. And we will have a book launch later this year, also for the small amount of of the um, um, printed book. Yes, and now, people, questions. Do you have something to ask? Our ask or comment or anything? We can. And we are continuing the discussion later today, but if you now have something related to this part, all these guests here, so please be, feel free. Thomas has the microphone. Even short comments. Yes, there is one, Anna. Um. This is not really a question, but uh, maybe a comment, or it, maybe it becomes a question. But um, uh, I'm I'm not a designer um, of in the designer field in the same sense that you guys are, because I'm kind of a performance maker and choreographer, and I have been thinking for quite a while about um, the value of international traveling. And, and the kind of my question goes to or relates to the this kind of like a, a arts uh, fu funding and the sort of like domains of the art culture and the industry it has sort of somehow at, at least in Finland it has been for like decades this that the idea of internationality has become a value and some sort of um, kind of like um, that if you are like an internationally traveling artist in whatever kind of profession, that becomes an extra value for yourself as an artist. And then that has so slowly become something that, um, that is being pursued for the sake of, just for the sake of being international, just traveling internationally. And that has also um, consequently led to these kind of situations I think in music and in performance where people tour in festivals and they just go into a festival they build up a performance they you know perform it and then they just leave and you don't really see anything of the place and the culture mm -hmm. and um, you know economically and environmentally and, and kind of like financially I think that's a huge problem mm -hmm. in our today's society or in in the in the world of today so my kind of like, my underlining question, or this kind of like, what is there in the undercurrent, I've 
I think you all touched upon it a little bit, but what do you see despite of this sort of like economical and sort of like artist ego valuing system, what would be the the, the sort of like um, value of inter internationality and, and how would you, if you could if in the perfect world somehow change the system in that sense that how would you actually then prefer to work internationally that would that you could make the best out of it what i'm when i'm hearing this kind of like collaboration and learning from others and 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 not so much of the idea that we just for the cultural exchange or artistic exchange reasons, we just go and show our work internationally or see somebody else's work in here. Did you, was I in any way clear? Yeah. Like what would be oh, yes. the, this, this more kind of like a personal reasons that you find as an artist, the, mm. the international collaboration valuable and how would you strengthen that in practice? Yeah, I think it's about not yeah, as as meeting people all over and feeling that really get to know some things that, and that means more than one day. It needs more <laughs> more time. But then I it's I think it's really important, yeah. To get yeah, not to co collapse inside as as just meeting the same people all the time and being more going like this. I think it's more going like this, if you know what I mean. But mm -hmm. Yeah, not to be just with those same people every day. And so it's more about yeah. and, But that means time and that's I, in my ideal world, that would be the way. And that is the way that you spend time Either in somewhere else or 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 with 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 the people. Learn to take it slower. I mean, Rock Rockvere, what Malta Scandal Festival? At least two decades ago, when I started going there, the program was built so that uh, all the guests had the possibility, at least they could stay in the accommodation for the whole festival and really have a chance to meet, see the other shows, and take participate in the in the discussions and, and seminars. I don't know if they still can afford it, but that, that would be the idea, to have the, like, the time to travel by land and then the time to stay where you went. Mm -hmm. That would be like, really fantastic. Maybe you would then have to also maybe expect less, less money per hour from your work to have this experience to participate mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. For example, I was dri driving the truck with the set to Antwerp last February from Finland. So our producer didn't want to fly, so she was spending like four days of her own time sitting in the truck instead of flying. But she didn't get any money from the production since it, it, we didn't have the money. Mm. But that's also a personal choice, like, and also an experience to be <laughs> with me in a truck. <laughs> Sorry, Heidi. <laughs> Uh, yeah. 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 But I, I was thinking about this actually for this talk. Like the. Well, yeah. It's usually down to like money and time. And I think the biggest thing is like the difference is like yeah the duration that there's a big difference say of uh, a group of Finnish designers making something here and going on tour and showing it in different countries as opposed to designers coming from here and working with other designers from different countries together to create something or collaborate together. Um, which then involves more time spending together. And I think that can be really beneficial in, in terms of working with people from different backgrounds, working with people from different cultures, learning from that, um, as opposed to yeah, going to different countries and performing what, uh, what you've already achieved or something. Um, and yeah, I think that can be beneficial. I think that question comes close to the how would I put it, the social cultural learning of an art, learning, ongoing learning process of an artist. And that's very interesting one. And unfortunately, I, I, maybe other questions still now. 
Tommy has just to, one. Just to know yeah, sure. let's let's take this one question and then we have to move on in the program and we will have a short pause if the, after this and we will continue continue. Yeah, there is a yeah, there is a po- 30 minutes pause but which now will be something like 15 minutes maybe but Tommy your questions your well, question is still more on. just like a comment because yeah. uh, this Sorry, this comment, yeah. uh, this um, international the, the, like choices just having time so um, and taking it slower so it, it actually precisely that why the PQ was uh, so good experience because there you have a time to spend and understand the company you are spending the time with. So, so you, you have a possibility to meet new people and old people and, and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's spending the time and thinking about the case of like this uh, now very famous painter, this EU Susi Raya, who refused to go to New York to, to the opening of, the, of, yeah. of her exhibition uh, in MoMA. And, and was like uh, there by, by Zoom and, and, and all the curators were like <laughs> shocked that the, there was an artist who is uh, refusing this kind of publicity uh, in, in a way. Well, she, there, there was a participation, but it was like her own way to, to participate. And, and, and it is also linking to this, uh, which men- mentioned before, this kind of, uh, how would say, this kind of social... Um, Generosity, this kind of possibility to be kind, it's also part of this taking slowly, uh, giving possibility to to meet and then be kind or or mm-hmm. or, or generous or or give your hand to, to help somebody. So that also needs time. Of course, that may happen in a, in, a, in a rush too. But uh, you have more possibilities. To that. Only this kind of uh, uh, adding notions. Thank you. Thank you for the questions and the and the comments and let's continue with them later in the discussion today and now we will have a pause and I think I would suggest that let's keep the schedules so we will anyways have 20 minutes now f- spare time then we will come back quarter to three yes thank you for thank the you. panelists for the audience and people online thanks I have to apologize. I'm, I'm rushing to a run through. So if you would would have asked me anything, send me an email. So <laughs> we'll yes, we will forward <laughs> the questions to you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Kiitos.
No niin, jatketaan vielä tätä. Tästä näin vähän. Toki jos nostat sitä tarpeeksi, niin kaikki kyllä lähtee sieltä. Mutta sitten tota, joku tommonen kultainen keskitie. Tai just tota, puheenvolyymi oli tämmönen vähän matalan. Hankala ympäristö ehdottomasti. Check 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 Hey 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 Mutta mä suosittelen, että teet sen suoraan sinne masteriin sen No, jos mä puhun tänne ihan mikkiin, niin sitten tää on varmaan vähän erilainen meininki, mutta... Nyt ei ala kiertää niin paljon. Joo. Niin, 
have to plug it into the computer here. Okay. Or yeah. like like in, yeah.
Okay, welcome. Well, on my behalf, I'm Thomas Fandy, uh, Professor of Sound Design at the Theatre Academy, and uh, we are on our third part for our seminar for now, and we have the student panel for st still uh, stu studying here and also people who have graduated recently. And uh, we have here Outi Benempa, an MA student for lighting design, Bailey Porkinghorn, who is working for us right now in this uh, theatre academy, Mikko Salminen, a uh, stage designer, uh, scenographer, uh, gradua graduated just recently, and Willy Pack, uh, sound design student. Uh, and I think uh, what we are interested on this third part uh, is mostly, mostly things that consider studying and the internationalization and also your thoughts about what do you think about studying abroad or coming, coming to study in Finland and things like that. I have the questions here, but I would like you to also present yourselves briefly so, so that we can start, start from there. And uh, yeah, I think we can start from Mikko maybe. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Mikko Salminen. I'm a scenographer, performer and recent graduate uh, from Design for the Performing Arts Department. Um, yes, I've been, uh, well, recently and in my studies, been interested in site-specific performances and international studies, so maybe that is the reason I'm here, to talk about a little bit about the studies I've had during, during the time at Teak and in Aalto University. But, yeah, I don't know uh, if, if, if it needs more introduction. Yeah, we have, I have photos uh, rolling for each of your works, but they are, I think, a bit uh, random order, maybe. But there are some, some things that you can see what, what our students and graduates have, have been working with uh, internationally, maybe. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. Let's go to Willy. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Willy Pakka. Uh, I'm an MA student in the sound design program here. And uh, yeah, recently or like last last semester, I was on exchange in Berlin in the Ernst Busch School of Performing <laughs> Arts. And uh, the program there was called uh, Spiel und Objekt, which is kind of a was or well like program inside the pretty like basic basic drama school so yes i was there and then uh, just this thursday i came back from berlin because i was designing this dance piece there uh, with the students from what's it there the dance academy in berlin so yeah those are like like international studies and mm, yeah that's about it. Thank you. And I'm Odi Venempa, an MA student in lighting design. And during my studies, I've been quite interested in like, like opening a path to maybe working in the f future uh, abroad and just like trying to figure out what are, what are the skills I would need for that, what, what can I get from this education, and like what is the path and also just trying to figure out what it means and if I want to actually work in Finland or somewhere else. And I, I've been on a few, like four different courses or projects that have taken me abroad. So maybe I'd tell, tell a little bit about those today. And uh, I'm Bailey. I'm uh, originally from the UK. I have a background in uh, music and sound production technology. And I moved over here um, about four years ago to study at Alta University. And I graduated there with a master's in sound and new media. Um, and yeah, more recently I now work for Deak. Uh, I work in the Mullu building uh, in the storage department. 
and I also work um, freelance as a sound technician for Helsinki Open Waves, which is a uh, translingual non-profit online radio. Uh, we make all kinds of content like live shows, podcasts uh, regarding um, multinationality and translingualism. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, very nice to have you here. Um, also, because you started recently, so it's very nice to hear, hear things that you have been doing here or on, on what you have been studying abroad. Um, maybe we should continue with your your uh, uh, how uh, about the first question. How how has the internationalization of your studies been achieved? Uh, your experiences, and uh, you can also highlight some important things that you would like to, like to uh, share with us. So maybe we can start with your uh, experiences. Do we, should we move to the examples or? If you'd like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, my, my studies kind of, especially in Finland, happened kind of by accident. Um, <laughs> I was lucky enough to be kind of uh, accepted into Arto and um, planning to leave the country before things like Brexit and a worldwide pandemic happened um, and kind of a whole bunch of other spanners that were being thrown into the works. Um, but with moving to Finland in particular, uh, for my, well, I kind of used my artistic practice as a way to integrate myself into the country itself, uh, into the culture, into the nature specifically as well. Uh, as most of my work kind of is in the realm of acoustic ecology. So um, how, uh, humans and non-humans uh, interact with their environment uh, mediated by the sounds that they make and the sounds that other beings produce. Uh, and so I guess we could maybe yeah. even move to First one. Uh, the second one maybe. Yeah. Well, actually, the third, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you can see here a Eurasian blue tit um, having some food. So this is part of my uh, thesis work as well that I was using. Uh, the whole premise behind this and the next piece as well, uh, you just go down one is attempting to kind of uh, learn how birds specifically uh, interact with their environment uh, because they have the ability to kind of cross boundaries between nature and urbanized areas very, very easily. Um, and so I would take uh, their physical actions, uh, how they would interact with uh, the bird feeder that I saw just now, uh, that had basically a bunch of sound objects attached to it, like kalimba, tines, uh, contact mic. And I would basically try and translate those actions into uh, my actions with this piano here, which I moved to the forest. Uh, I had to move it away recently because I might have been fined for fly tipping. Uh, but yeah, so the one thing I didn't expect to come from this is, and what I didn't expect to actually be tied with uh, my personal experiences while studying is uh, the building of communities and the building of uh, economies that kind of promote the growth of communities. 
So, for example, with the bird feeder that we saw just now, I'm kind of creating this gift economy between myself and the birds where I give them some food and they provide me with knowledge um, of how to, how they specifically interact with sound objects and I can kind of take this and use it however I please. Um, and of course uh, that kind of drew a lot of parallels with me uh, with uh, how communities are built within the education system here. Um, or at least that's how I view it. But, yeah. Thank you. Um, Audi. Yes. Um, how has your, the internationalization of your studies been achieved? What, what type of, of things have you experienced? Can you share some highlights? Yeah, so uh, I've been in, as I mentioned, like four different kinds of courses or types, mm -hmm. which um, all give like a, a little bit different information about working in international settings. I've been on courses from, from organized by the university, such as joint studies courses for Berlin, to, to view the Berlin Theater Treffen. And I've been a part of the PQ project uh, in a Nordea's uh, organization or network course with the Nordic and Baltic countries in Copenhagen and lastly I was I did an internship with Minatikainen in France for three weeks so like quite different types of courses but uh, I think they have given me information a lot about like just the working cultures in different places and most importantly it's given me like this kind of uh, belief in my in the skills I've got in the studies that in the skills that I already have and the knowledge that like making performances is essentially the same <laughs> so it's not something to be scared of with like thinking about future and working in different settings but also quite interestingly uh, like I think I learned the most with when I was in Berlin from the two uh, exchange students, so two students who were doing exchange in Helsinki and then we like about 10 people we were together in Berlin for a week and this just um, that just gave the realization that this kind of actual exchange of ideas it requires quite a bit of time and this kind of situation where you can uh, you are all in some sense equal that you can and you are in, yeah, just this shared experience of makes possible just seeing the differences and similarities. And yeah, and in general, I found that uh, being abroad for short terms, all, all of these have been quite short, like a week to a three weeks period of times, it's quite exhausting actually, <laughs> and very easily, and that just yeah, highlights that it needs time to to see the sameness and differences and to build something from that. Thank you. Uh, Billy, you already mentioned your exchange studies. Um, can you give us a, some, some, some details and highlights of your studies and abroad? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to, uh, from what Oti said, I think it's a good, good point that this kind of the most important realizations and stuff happen when you're with like students from other countries in a setting that is somehow equal and like I don't know how to facilitate that. But for example, for me uh, during my exchange, that happened maybe more easily. Uh, because the program that I was in uh, is only six people 
So they take six people every two years and then they go through the whole thing and then they graduate and then it's six people again. And it was quite um, separate from the from the rest of the school, so it was really like the old vast building kind of like, yeah, actually separate, uh, but even smaller. <coughs> and six of the, uh, I mean, three of the six, six students in the program were from somewhere else than Germany. So they all had decided that they would study in English, even though I think they do, the school does require some sort of like, uh, like a B one or something like in 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 German, but so for me that was also really good because I don't speak any German, so it was kind of a risk to go there. But but yeah, I was uh, happily surprised with this that all of the studies were in were in English. Um, yeah, so just uh, to kind of comp comp what what Audi said. Um, but yeah. Um, some highlights from the exchange. Uh, well, it was nice to see because uh, during my exchange, it was they have sort of all the theory studies are during the winter semester, and then they only do projects during the summer. So I w was a part of like two projects they did, and then some shorter courses, and we did this one project in a kind of the university owned theater but to see kind of the hierarchies and like how people work in these settings uh, from the perspective of like being the student and then coming to this space that is mainly occupied by the staff in the in the theater that is kind of connected with the school but kind of also not and the uh, it was way more kind of hierarchical than what I've seen in like Helsinki, like um, professional theaters or or here in the in the school and yeah, kind of trying to I don't know swim with the tide of of that was really yeah teaching for me and yeah maybe something else also comes later. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Nico, what you can um, highlight from your working or, or studying abroad? Well, I've been in, uh, I'd say, three courses that have been focused on international studies. Uh, the first one was in 2021 at Aalto University. It was called Building Bridges. Uh, it was one and a half year long course uh, in a sense that we had three one week intense sessions during that time. But due to the COVID situation, uh, it turned out to be not so uh, well fully realized as the course intended. We were uh, planning on uh, traveling on different locations to work uh, and collaborate together. However, we managed to have some uh, online artistic collaboration sessions and uh, one visit uh, uh, at the end of the course. Uh, the second one I participated was in 2022 in Narva, Estonia. It was a Erasmus workshop slash master class they called it and it was one week intensive uh, workshop uh, in, in Narva. And these pictures actually are from that course, from those locations. We were working on these abandoned uh, factory uh, environments on, uh, on that site. And uh, well, during that time, uh, the Ukrainian situation was announced. So it had also some sort of significant uh, undertone uh, set to the course uh, during that time when we uh, were uh, on the border of Russia and Estonia at the time. And the third one was uh, PQ Project in 2023. It started in 2022 uh, autumn, but uh, that was the sort of the most recent one I was part of uh, uh, as a student and uh, in the Ecoskinographic panel as well.
uh, but I would maybe summarize the experience uh, or at least for myself there were like maybe three aspects that sort of stayed throughout the whole experience of, experience of each course and they were the social aspect, uh, getting to know new people, getting to know uh, different uh, sort of ways of being, interacting. And the second one was the cultural aspect of meeting people with different backgrounds, different skill sets due to those backgrounds. Uh, and then the artistic aspect of uh, how the different schools, different theories, different work ethics affected those ways of us collaborating together. So I think there were many things or at least many skills I gained through those experiences, but uh, those were sort of the maybe three main aspects I was thinking about during my stays or visits or um, uh, in those courses. And of course, uh, like or already said, it takes time to sort of navigate those uh, new, new connections uh, and find the ways to communicate with each other, since uh, usually in those courses, English is the, maybe the second language we talk. But I think, uh, or at least in my experience, we always find the ways to communicate with each other through our artistic approaches and through our mediums. And uh, I think uh, also one of the one of the highlights has been also sharing uh, our experiences from our own uh, studies. Uh, within our own universities, in our own schools. And actually, there was always like talks uh, to find maybe some sort of differences, what kind of things you do, what kind of things are being thought in, in your school. And I remember this uh, one uh, sort of uh, discussion with, with Estonian student at the time in Narva. Uh, they were visiting UniArts spaces, and they saw how many studios there is and they were like, oh my god, you have so many spaces to work with. Like, that must feel amazing. We have only one. And then I realized, like, okay, maybe I've also taken granted some things or some aspects of my own studies uh, during the time here. So maybe I also gained a lot of appreciation uh, and self-reflection. Uh, on my own time and studies in here uh, at UniArts. So many different sort of things and aspects. Thank you. Uh, I think we can move, uh, move on to a second question. And uh, we can also be a bit more open. We don't have to go like, like uh, one at a time. But um, as a university teacher, I, uh, I'm really um, interested about what kind of skills do your studies give to your working as, a, as an international uh, artist or, or working for it in, internationally and uh, if there is something that you think could be improved what would those things probably be do you do you think that you can kind of like share some thoughts about uh, how you are now prepared when you have studied in our, our premises or, or uh, some new media or, or abroad before? How, how, how the things are now for you as an artist to work internationally? Well, one of the things that I uh, thought about and listening to Mika just now is that uh, the biggest thing, obviously, working internationally is the, is the language. And I think at uh, or during my studies, I've had a pretty good balance of of talking about your practice and what you do, and like vocalizing these things out is really important. Because then, when you have to uh, talk in another language and then Finnish also about this, you I mean, if you've had practice in Finnish, then it's much more easier in in English. 
and uh, also becoming from the perspective of a sound designer, uh, it was really important that I, I've had some practice on, on speaking about my practice because I realized that sound designers as we think of them here in this school and university like don't exist uh, kind of anywhere else because it's a, a, there is no such such education anywhere and the whole term is kind of like this okay so you're a sound engineer or okay so you're a musician but this kind of in betweenness or like some third thing doesn't exist anywhere else so uh, yeah just talking about your practice and talking about I don't know art in general is, is something that I think is really important during our studies and the fact that we have the seminar every <coughs> every May is, I think, really important because then you have to vocalize like w what have you been doing and why and all of this and me maybe there could be even more of this these situations and quickly one more thing uh, would it be that a difference that I noted in uh, like uh, the studies we have here or like the Finnish art education and some of the education the other people have had is that we have a really big focus on kind of how we do things and not maybe why uh, this and I was talking to a friend who studied in Geese and recently also or the past uh, past semester and he was also talking about this how like in Giesen, for example, and I also stumbled upon this in Berlin, uh, the focus was maybe, or the intervention from, from the teacher's side kind of became more early in the process of, okay, I maybe want to do something like this. And then the questions came like, but why? And this kind of, and we kind of workshop that uh, aspect of the works more than here it's maybe, okay, I want to do this, and then the first question is, okay, how are you going to do it? And then we kind of go from that, so it's a different um, part of the process that gets more intercepted. And this is something that I realized during my exchange, that uh, I could have more kind of information or like um, knowledge on how to talk about this this point in the process of making something. Thank you. Yeah. Should others have points of view yeah. about about the skills you have for working internationally? I can maybe add to that that uh, you were talking about the communication, but also I would say, um, of course, uh, talking about your own artistic approach and. Uh, the working methods, but also for me, I think the main focus was uh, in listening and observing and tuning uh, very differently uh, what I've experienced uh, during my studies in here. So maybe it was the new environment, new people, the new sort of uh, situation uh, that sort of pushed me to actually uh, tune in and listen and also in those sharing uh, moments to hear what kind of experiences other students have and what sort of uh, information or um, skills I can gain from that simply by uh, observing others and seeing how they work, what how they think about uh, working, uh, like all the, I would say my, my focus was in those studies more in that sort of tuning in, listening <laughs> aspect, even though I, I feel like I've also learned a lot about uh, uh, talking about my own artistic whys and how do I do this, why do I do this, what do I do and what are the reasons or things that affects my doing. but. Maybe the, this sort of listening, tuning in was something new that occurred, occurred uh, to me in those studies. Yeah. Thank you. Do you think the 
like came from the language side of it or like the culture crash of it that it happened during this like international situations more of this tuning in or listening I think it was uh, some of many things or mm. maybe it was the environment you have to sort of be present to I don't know maybe it's it's somewhat a human thing when you are put in this sort of unknown situation mm. you are fully aware of everything and then to sort of settle down and to listen to experience the and maybe it was the time intensive week or so that affected that too but mm. of course the language possibly different ways of working possibly the different backgrounds different ways of understanding each other and willingness to open mm. ourselves uh, within each other m m might have affected that mm. yeah yeah I, I agree that uh, if, if we think about communication the, the um, possibility to give space and kind of like tune in like you said is one one way of communication yeah absolutely so and, and that can actually uh, you can experience that a bit better when you are in a, some other culture on uh, in a different language and different sets so yeah that's absolutely true yeah. i agree <laughs> yeah me too and from some like the, this also reminded to me something i heard uh, actually a foreign or some someone studying here in finland saying that like the the culture here they noticed was so different like the way we can have conversations and uh, how we are with conflict and and compromise, like they saw a tendency to compromise and not question mm. here in this school. So I was also thinking of this, maybe this can be something related a bit to what you said, really about yeah. this, like, For sure. yeah, like how do you have to argument, like what you do and why you do it, and, mm -hmm. and also how to learn to do that in like a, yeah, because I noticed in myself, like it's very hard to be like, uh, like I quite avoid conflict, but mm. but this is like the place to learn to have a conflict in mm. like a mm -hmm. like no, a good way. It's a good thing actually. The the facilitation of communication here is so importantly embedded in education, mm. uh, especially in the fact that like you know in most uh, even like we have department specific uh, associations even uh, where in you know in the UK you'd be lucky enough to get one student association per educational institution mm. uh, but like having department specific associations and having these communities uh, and events stemming yeah. from this really kind of gives you that First of all, builds your network, and second of all, does like yeah, it facilitates the communication between uh, yourself and uh, yeah, people from other countries who may be coming here to study. Um, it, oh, I drew a blank. Shit. How do you something. think? How do you think? What, what kind of, of skills did you have already when you moved to Finland to study? Did you have everything you needed, or do you think that something could have been improved about? Yeah, I mean, from studying in the UK, I really didn't have many, like, much access to networks. Like, yeah. kind of, uh, community integration isn't really a big thing there. Um, whereas here it is kind of it's almost the prime focus and that really when you're like uh, transitioning from the studying environment to the work environment being able to take advantage of your network is like oh. super super valuable and once again that comes from being able to listen to other people's perspectives and kind of soak in the information and kind of yeah develop a network of trade of said information yeah, thank you. And 
Well, yeah, to my mind came also like from the practical side of things, like what can education institutions do for yeah. students who want to work in different settings and abroad. Like I also think there could be some work done there, like to also give information and ease the way, like just how do you do it? How do you get to this work chance? Is it always just a friend you know or like uh, connections made in with like friends or something like that or could it be helped some in some other way within the institution and uh, thinking of the knowledge and skills I have now and I think that the most important thing going to work in in a foreign setting or abroad is just to have like a openness and willingness to be like uh, surprised or like it, just to be aware that you <laughs> do not know how things work but you can like manage it and you can ask and mm -hmm. and things will work out maybe it can be a little bit more hierarchical or stiffer or you have to find the right person to ask for things to get done or something like that or anything like it can be difficult but it's just yeah yeah, yeah, I think it's what I need now is just this attitude and, and openness. Yeah, I think that if we think about our, our uh, work as an artist, we have some sort of, of, of uh, personal points in every, everything we do. So those, those moments of openness are very valuable information for working as an artist. Uh, but I, I think that leads us to the third question um, of the reflections of, of importance of uh, student exchange or uh, studying uh, in different countries or getting people to study with you in your home country. What do you, what do you think about that? How can you... Um, that, could you give us some, some reflections about that? I think what I perceive as the primary importance of student exchange is really through the exchange of ideas it comes like the phasing out of traditionalism. Uh, for example, like me and like I've recently started performing uh, in a duo, so I perform sound and uh, my friend Utkash performs visuals. Um, and we kind of, well, coming from, I come from the UK and he comes from uh, a northern part in India. And obviously we have like our kind of cultural differences and we have the fact that, you know, my, my country is unfortunately an ex-colonial power. Uh, but the thing that kind of really brought us together was our love for, um, like our love for our practices and how those practices intersect. Uh, we, like for example, we kind of work with uh, old mediums, old formats, uh, specifically like I work with cassette tapes. He is an old film buff, so he likes uh, VHS. And yeah, we kind of connected on that. And through that, we managed to kind of move these cultural boundaries aside and start to actually focus on what we share together that makes us happy and like what actually we how we can kind of lean on each other to present our own artistic visions to the world I guess, yeah thank you did you have uh, examples of, of that book. We can leave it for now. Okay. <laughs> Let other I think, take I think watching art is also some some. Uh, it gives us also also points. But yeah, we can we can uh, go on um, reflections of importance of student student exchanges. What do you think about that? Is it important? Mm. Well, I think that uh, we understand world through people. Yeah. So it's just like. 
and and we know world also through people and their experiences. So it's quite uh, like important just to just not for being an artist or art student, but just being a person in a world mm -hmm. to know know the world and the people in it and their struggles and their lives and and for that reason, <laughs> it's immensely important. But yeah. But I, and I also want to question this, like also this desire for working in international settings that I've had myself, because I found that often uh, working tends to be like small periods or residences where you work very intensely and you do long days and you don't see meet the people and <laughs> you don't see the places. And I'm just like, <laughs> what is the point of that? Mm. I, and it's like, a, it's a bit struggle. Mm to like find the way to also yeah like as as an individual to be in the world in a way that's somehow meaningful i found that very specifically with um obviously not to bash open curriculums here um mm. cuz like i've had the greatest experience on courses that only last say 3 weeks mm. 2 weeks 1 week uh, but then, especially when you're trying to uh, get something meaningful out of, uh, say, university-wide art mm. studies or something like that, then you're kind of meeting people from other universities even that are taking the same course. And it, like you really do need to take that kind of time to really figure each other out. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, plus one to everything you guys just said, and yeah, I was kind of thinking like um, that for me, exchange studies was a one, uh, one way of, of kind of uh, being in a new setting or like being interested in something like totally different from, from what I've been doing and then kind of regaining like um, <laughs> interest in the in the art, uh, but but it also it, as Oti said, like has lots to do with kind of understanding the world through people yeah. and understanding people and like very different people and yeah, especially now as like borders are getting like at least inside the EU like more and more kind of we also have the opposite direction in. in European politics, but like uh, doing the same thing because we're doing like theater, and even if we're doing like dance without the language and all of this, like the things are same as you said, mm -hmm. but like the practices might differ in, in some like cultural things. But but like yeah, um, I don't know. I I think it is it is important to have like some some sort of clashing to, uh, during your studies with like other cultures doing the same same thing um, yeah. yeah i i agree i totally agree with with what ot beautifully put it uh, i think it gives a lot of perspective and it it like really said like it's good to sort of burst the bubble you're in every once in a while to get that perspective. And I think uh, in some ways uh, with everything going on around the world, I think it's somewhat necessary to have that international exchange. And I would think in studies as well to, to, get, to get more information about the world, the people and about ourselves as well. Absolutely. I, I also think we had a question um, on the um, professional panel. The last question, uh, I think, was, was a bit similar about the importance of working uh, internationally or abroad. And uh, from, from what I'm hearing from you, I think um, it leads to a kind of like uh, second view of things, because it's easy to think 
that when you start working as an artist, going from country to country and and mm. and uh, working with things things, and you don't actually, it's very easy to get get to the point that you don't really see or learn anything. You just work and work, and then you move on. But what you have, um, I, I think, pointed out is that that. We, we, when we study and we study well, we actually learn to study and we learn to be interested. So that is one one very crucial point. That we, what we have to actually learn is to be interested. And when we when we learn to be interested, we actually can uh, can get and give something about up from our experiences working with different cultures and different people. So that's a point of of view, I think. Mm. From, from that side, yeah. yeah. And also, I think that um, I'm just thinking also now that uh, what it means to work in international and be being taught uh, to think of the audiences and who we do the work for. And I'm just like thinking if, like, how how do you broaden that? Like, what is what is the community and what is the audience we are working for? And, and how to do that in a yeah yeah and what we can uh, give from, with our art afterwards mm. from those experiences maybe even not only in our work but just in daily life you know that um, I always enjoy the fact that every time I go to like a party or something like that even if it's just some small house party it's also kind of a sociology lecture <laughs> like it's kind of even though we are you know there to eat and drink and have a good time it's, it's still a melting pot of information and culture and especially when you're in such environments as uh, universities where student exchanges a uh, very big thing. It, yeah. When different perspectives can kind of transcend uh, the work environment uh, specifically, I think that's rather important too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we can move on to uh, questions or ideas, what this uh, conversation has uh, brought us. And uh, we also have students, students here as, as um, who, who can, you can also share your experiences if you have some, some sort of things you would like to share. We, we have very good time for that. So, yeah, if there is something. Questions or experiences? Uh, I have, I have a, a mic, mic yes. Uh, I, I can give it for someone, but I can also uh, perhaps, uh, this is not a question, but uh, uh, a comment maybe. I, I think from a program leader's point of view that it's a question for us how to increase amount of uh, incoming exchange students or, or strengthen uh, the internationality in our everyday studies and have to say that it's now current pro project uh, between three of us that uh, how to make it easier for uh, students from abroad to come here. It should mean that we have to have more uh, uh, English courses, English speaking studies. Uh, it, it's a one uh, way to that. And uh, I also see that we have already uh, many ways uh, to have this uh, international aspect. We have these job courses. Uh, 
we uh, you mentioned this theater graphen and and then we have the, those courses which are in relation to uh, Baltic Circle and then uh, yes both incoming and an outgoing exchange is one 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 way uh, to have these uh, experiences yeah thank you and maybe all of the courses that Oti mentioned, I also applied to, <laughs> or me, almost all mm. of them. But, but uh, how many students do, do you take on these courses, and like university wide, if, if we want to have more of this like international stuff, then we should mm. take more students into this. And then a comment on maybe what the faculty or the administrative part of the school could do to make people more welcome, maybe, mm -hmm. or to come here is like, we have this demonstration right now, and like all of Finland, Finland-wide going on, and I wish that the universities would actually come together and take a stand against these mm -hmm. like anti-student, very like racist policies that they're kind of trying to do. And as we're having this discussion about like international studies or like international whatever like in Finland then we also have to look at the current political situation and like what to do yeah. with this because like if if this continues on then we're not gonna have anything international very soon so just wanted to also bring this thing into this discussion I agree very much like we shouldn't necessarily have to ask universities to show their support like it really should be kind of effortless in that way that especially it's yeah it's relevant these days because of the changing government and uh, how that is going to affect exchange studies as a whole like throughout basically all of the institutions not just here but Art of, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and uh, universities as a whole like are a big kind of power in society, and yeah. maybe coming together and like voicing these things out could actually have you know an effect rather than this kind of we support the students, but that's kind of where it ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this level of but there's no so taking pretty, part as such. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty pretty new in this sense, but, but still. Yeah. yeah, important words. I, I think also that uh, after, after the pandemic, uh, we have to be more careful also the things that we take for granted. Like um, everything changed quite easily to remote work. So uh, I think that it also creates an illusion, illusion for that everything can be worked yeah, everything can be done re remotely, but what you don't get is that you actually don't learn anything about the culture or the people or anything mm -hmm. like that. So uh, you don't get the communication, you get, don't get the, the silent, you don't get the bodies, you don't get uh, any any kind of like uh, what what we need as a as a human beings uh, working together. So so we really have to take care of also the national level how we spread the idea of how, what, what is important actually, what, what, what needs to be learned. <laughs> so, so that is not just something that you write, write in a le uh, on, a, on a kind of like plan that, that there needs to be international, international things, but how we actually support it. Is, does it actually come from supporting the national idea of what is important in <laughs> art making or life? <laughs> Mm. Kind of like, mm. yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I could add on on that idea, in um, in the sense that there is this kind of a two kinds of the internationalities or ideas, or perhaps even more. But I was thinking while you were talking about this um, need to understand as as some kind of a basic human human right in a way, or human like uh, like. Uh, quality in order to, we need also to understand the, the other 
and others and, and different kinds of others. And then there is this kind of a tendencies of reducing the the concept of the internationality, some kind of a, um, economic growth or this kind of uh, it's it's part of the business or it's uh, it's um, as um, Hanna Payala Aseva was uh, very like uh, well like um, pointing out in that last discussion uh, or previous discussion about this kind of um, this kind of um, economics of of this kind of artist ego of promoting uh, themselves uh, by being international or you are also I think a little bit referring to that this kind of uh, um, this kind of uh, being this this kind of uh, efficient in a way going being efficient artist going to gigs and going in in the morning going out in the, in in the, in the midnight and and doing this kind of uh, like a short periods of intensive working and not even seeing where they are in a way so so ba just like balancing this but I, I recognize that this kind of different kind of uh, concepts or modes of how we are like uh, thinking about the internationality and I think it, this is exactly where we should like uh, reclaim the uh, somehow the the word for ourselves what do we mean by that so it's not taken by this kind of uh, uh, this kind of um, um, it's not only the money sector or this kind of efficiency sector or it's not this kind of ego project it's it's a kind of a basic need to to it's 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 it, which is then there is a clear link to culture and and, and and art yeah this is a little bit like a like why but this is also a, a little bit of like a philosophical question yeah I think anybody that, I think that you're right in a way that like Especially as artists, we pride ourselves so much in being able to convey how we uh, perceive the world, how we integrate that into our art. But then I think the thing that gets really lost is that the way we build communities like doesn't the most important thing necessarily isn't to to be able to, you know, properly and adequately, uh, if we're talking in white cube terms, uh, to convey your art. Uh, like, you don't necessarily have to really cater to, you know, like a big gallery to be able to communicate that. Like, I think, like, for example, when I go to an art gallery and I see these and like I meet with the artist and they fire into this monologue about oh this this series is about the Anthropocene and all. okay great but that's like there's some really amazing pieces of say embroidery in front of me <laughs> but then like what we shouldn't be afraid to go back to like the absolute basics of it to be like how does this, like, why do you do this personally? And nine times out of ten when I ask this to people, it's because of either a cultural reason or it's because of a... I, I struggle with some mental health reasons or I'm dealing with some unresolved trauma from something, I do this and it makes me feel better. Like, I feel like that is a lot more important, a lot more authentic, a lot more... It's enough, I think. But, you know, when... Another example, like, you know, take whiskey, say. Like, these distillers, you know, use these specific methods. They age this stuff in barrels for decades to craft this perfection. Uh, like, do you think they have some sort of insane metaphysical reason as to why they do it? No, they just like the taste of it. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's and that's enough for you know in the 1930s for someone in Japan who was importing this stuff to say, oh, actually, I kind of want to give it a go to make that. Let's send some people over to Scotland to learn how to do it for a couple of years. Like, I feel like enjoyment in and of itself is the prime aspect and the most important aspect of what we do. 
and I feel like that's the most important thing to to start building a community first of all uh, especially internationally sorry a bit of a monologue there no <laughs> no no it was really nice nice monologue I think <laughs> very very nice analogies yeah do we still have some uh, comments or things you would like to say for our student panel? If not, I think we can end, end this third part here and, and get to the last minutes of, of discussion or ideas what, what the whole, whole seminar was about. But thank you very much for joining us. We have time for this kind of uh, summary or this kind of uh, general notions of, of this afternoon. So um, I'm not sure if, if Lisa was having already some kind of uh, organized uh, notions there because I saw some like remarks on the paper. Um, I could like warm up a little bit by um, like sharing my notion that the, 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 it's a little bit like surprising even though it shouldn't be but the, there seems to be one thing which is repeating uh, in these different talks during this afternoon and that is the, the this kind of a time frame or having time to uh, to, to spend time with with the, the <laughs> Xenia was talking about time it was a production time and time for art making to to, to prepare properly or have time to to do the art and the possibilities and and then the both the, the student and the professionals are talking about the possibility to escape the this kind of first quarrel wheel uh, a little bit to, to have time to actually to meet the colleagues or or to have a sense to I think Mick was putting very well this kind of listening it's it's also uh, listening in the situation, which is creating possibilities to 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 understand uh, the situations and and to be like a generous also. Um, so um, not like only like uh, running in and out of, of the theater or the different kind of situations to encounter to have some time. Um, yeah, this is what I'm actually now thinking quite much about this. Um, how to create time for internationality or these kind of uh, encounters. Please continue. Yes, about my uh, notions. Um, one is that networks are important. How, how to create networks already during the studies after that. And then I, uh, I'm uh, thinking of uh, um, two opposites. Uh, uh, do we see our art and design uh, to be local or global? And it comes uh, perhaps uh, discussion with uh, Xenia in, in last uh, spring and, and hear what she said uh, as part of her uh, presentation or story. Uh, she spoke about uh, the art role in society and uh, said that um, uh, art should not be easy, that artists should uh, always fight. And uh, she also uh, felt that she get energy from that. And for me, it means that you have to know the world where you are working and people you are working with. And uh, it uh, refers something local and unique. And uh, then it's a question, what is uh, global and international? And are they uh, same or different? This is question for all of us. 
and then I give a uh, floor to Thomas. What's your uh, notion from this? Yeah, I, 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 I didn't um, um, take two good notions for for my notebook, but I, I'm thinking quite a lot about the idea of, of why uh, why this is important, and and uh, I think in every um, aspect what we heard today, I hear something that is um, kind of like creating a human being. So I think th that. <laughs> I think the basic basic notion for me today is that that there are very many aspects what we really have to think about when we uh, th when we create possibilities for internationalization, but also we have to have to be uh, interested and we have to be um, kind of like we have to respect that we as a human beings need to kind of like uh, see the world and see the people in it so so it's 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 not the technology that brings us together actually it's something else but technology can help and it can uh, it can clear clear the barricades or or easy the way a bit but we we I think we have to, in some way, we have to have to get get the get the notions and give them give them out. Yeah, that's my notion. Thank you. And next, Raisa. Yes, thank you. I still want to add something. I have a couple of thoughts collected here. I was very happy that this uh, slowing down and ecology and sustainability showed up in all of these three parts and three sessions in some ways. And then the other, other thing was that uh, I was wondering what I already there in, in the professionals panels a little bit tried to bring up this idea about this thinking somehow planetary i don't know that uh, what if we instead of like nation national and international would uh, think more also somehow these planetary levels and then because well we are the nature and we are not separate of it so <laughs> these thoughts too and who's next Still some comments. What, what about you students? Anyone would you like to say something? Do you agree with this or any more like still more um, like um, something to add? No? Yep. Well, yeah, please, Oscar. So yeah, sorry, this probably is a comment and it's not really figured out, so I'm just bear with me. But um yeah, I was I was just thinking very like practical things of that. I think a lot of this uh seminar has been aiming towards like wanting more internal uh, internationalization, um, but then we're very aware of the uh current like real issues that are stopping that uh, with both within uh Finland and other European countries of uh, reactions to immigration, but also really big concerns uh, about money and social welfare and the support for people. And it's quite difficult because we, we a, lo a lot of us do have this um, urge for s slowing down and more interaction, but then this really depends on um, having the right support and having the right money. And then a lot of people don't have the, the choice and then it kind of coerces a lot of artists, a lot of creative people into ways where they think, okay, what can I do to uh, support myself? What can I do to make money? So it's, and I, this is more just like a personal thing of like how to move forward, how to deal with that because I have values and I've, but then I also have very real needs um, of supporting myself. So this is maybe just a bit of a comment. Um, but, but yeah, I think, I don't know if it was you that said it, but just, it's also maybe comes with 
sometimes having to make these um, choices or acceptances of um, of like I don't know lesser things that okay maybe my urge isn't to be really um, rich or famous but I I can also be uh, okay and satisfied with the things that I'm choosing to do and maybe I don't get paid as much or maybe I don't get as much whatever acknowledging but it's if I can feel some self-satisfaction with that then that should be enough um, but uh, but yeah I, I, I'm thinking about this a lot especially just with so much of the current issues bringing into question um, a lot of these issues and then even like uh, Alto University is now like the considering like the less programs in teaching in English because of the concern of so yeah I, but also at the same time very acknowledging these issues and not kind of ignoring them um, so that if there is a concern about local uh, issues then we should like think about them as well rather than ignore them yeah I don't know if this made any sense but yeah thanks <laughs> So I have the mic if anyone else to speak. I'm thinking about the languages. In, in a way, we are, we are using English now. We are basically should be bilingual in, in Finland. Uh, we are not so much, uh, we are not still very capable of, of using that. Uh, instead, we use English, and then we like it was very good. Um, like we had the the Xenia in a, in the be beginning, we had the translator, and 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 I remember these kind of um, writings in the newspapers about the how the people are like worried about um, how the lang the sk language skills are like degrading in a way that the, in Finland, for example, we are very like uh, the English is becoming uh, like a primary language, but. Uh, with the language, there is also so much more. That its language is somehow the soul of the of the of the of the different nations. There, there is this kind of uh, other cultural aspects coming with the along with the with the language. So, so the um, what, what about this Russian, French, uh, Germany? This kind of they um, they all are carrying this kind of. So we are like. Um, yeah, we have the general this lingua franca, uh, this in, in English uh, nowadays. But uh, also, I think it was Pietro Pietienen who mentioned in uh, in the previous that it's it's how he tries to learn some words in in local language or something. Sometimes it helps uh, when you can say left and right and. <laughs> And try to connect. It's a surprisingly uh, little thing, actually, what you can do, uh, and, and it, you can see the smile and surprise of the person who is like, "Oh, you, you speak a word," uh, and, and um, I, I realize that it, it becomes some some kind of a luxury necessity to, to these kind of skills because you don't have any more time. It's so efficient. The school, even the people are making choices. But um, yeah, somehow to have those um, kind of uh, some kind of uh, um, how the ethos of, of of maintaining something if you have already or at least learning a word or two. Oh, you can conclude this seminar. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm just saying. Uh, well, maybe that's something for the university to think about. Also, this language question. Like how to support people if language is the thing that helps us connect? Can we, can the university uh, assist in that? Either like with uh, having English in some courses and people's teachers capable in teaching in English, and or just giving other languages so that English is not always the only language. There are other languages as well, and people speak them, so. Yeah, maybe just also support that. Okay, uh, any other notions? I don't see any raising hands or... So then I, I uh, conclude this, that it's, it's, uh, this was the seminar this year <laughs> and this afternoon. Thank you for everybody. Uh, who were participating and
hopefully uh, these kind of international ideas and thoughts are now, now like uh, going a little bit forward at least we understand perhaps a little bit more about this or this, this afternoon is reminding of these kind of different aspects of what comes to the internationality. So thank you and have a good weekend.